check this. Got one more for the set list. Walk in the spot and I drop one track. No be the best, no be the best is. Walk in the rave like check this. Got one more for the set list. Tell me what's going down. I can't stand it when you're so shut down. But now I want more. 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 Tell me what's going down. I can't stand it when you're so shut down. But now I want more. 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 Tell me what's going down. Walk in the rave like check this. Got one more for the set list. Walk in the spot and I drop one track. No be the best, no be the best is. Check this. Got one more for the set list. Walk in the spot and I drop one track. No be the best, no be the best is. Walk in the rave like check this. Got one more for the set list. Podcasting the great point. Thank you.
on like Facebook. Yo, got that for great one. Send your broadcast to the great one. Hey, put you in your place, look. Keep your thoughts on the wall like Facebook. Yo, got that for great one. Send your broadcast to the great one. Great one, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the regular season has finally come to an end. And you know what that means? It is playoff time, baby. It is the Blue Otter Diamond League. It is the quarterfinals going on here. It is VBU Infusion versus Goth Boy Click. Yanni and Goferino bringing you all the action of this best of five, where the winner moves on to face either CB Diamond or we love Solbert. You know how much we love Solbert. And the yeah. loser goes home. I do know some people allegedly hate Solbert, but... That's a different, be, right? different time. Either way, though, we have gotten through all the bands here so far. VPU really targeting that mid lane support pull here. Um, the Morgana Zillion, of course, flex picks, and then Lissandra. These are all champions that work great at just saying no to someone, not letting them do something. So I'm wondering if that means Gothboy Click want to pick up something. Uh... Oh, wait, no, no, no. I was getting things mixed up. Either way. Karma going to be the first lock in here for Goth Boy Click. Very interesting to the, say the least. Hey, this is a new look team, although most of the same roles are, you know, obviously the same. Uh, looks like there was a substitution uh, for the jungle. Now it's uh, it's over eight, who is the uh, is the new jungler. Uh, so coming in for mid is Demon. So that kind of changes the complexion of the team. I mean, mid is Demon was the best player coming into it, and over eight just played last week and played really really well had a pop-off game on the graves which is suspiciously open here bbu they're gonna go with ziggs leona here it looks like this will be the bot lane pairing unless ziggs mid has suddenly uh come alive and that's something that we haven't seen out of them yet yeah it is still something you have to keep in mind just because we haven't seen bbu pick it in the past doesn't mean it's not something that they might bring out especially since it is now playoffs here or uh yanni you can go for these strats that you might have been keeping in your pocket all season and it's like well might as well bring them out now guarantee our spot to the next round of the playoffs and varus though being hovered okay still nocturne has been coming back up a little bit with the stride breaker build and the zaya coming in as well if it is the more poke orientated zaya here yanni you already have karma and zaya for a pretty decent little annoying poke combo and then you have the Nocturne to potentially just sweep in with that Paranoia and maybe finish off some of these poke down BBU members. Yeah, that poke out of the bot lane is going to be pretty horrendous for a Leona to deal with. And mind you, if it is Leona Ziggs, their engage is not so hot. So she's pretty much going to be on roam duty. Shivana going to be the pickup here. So that does mean that Leona could be that uh, that quote unquote second jungler as Shivana is probably going to farm up for quite a while into the second half of bands and we are zooming through them these teams already have done their studying it's twisted fate it's jace that are taking away vbu and gbc uh respectively 
Goodbye, Sufi. My dog just left my room. But the twist of fate just kind of recognizing maybe we don't want to give Goth Boy Click a bit of a semi-global composition here. Because if you have TF Nocturne, if you overextended any side lane by even a fraction of an inch, you're probably just gonna die to two ultimates, which is not always the most fun thing to deal with. Um, the cannon also being taken off the board here by VBU, so curious to see what they want to lock in for themselves. They do have that R4 pick. They do have their solo lanes in the dark still here, Yanni. So if they want to, they could lock in a top laner and keep the zigs up in the air, whether or not it's mid or bot. And it looks like that's going to be the case here with the Orn. You know, they find themselves themselves some pretty strong engage. Orn paired with Leona. That's going to wreak some havoc in team fights. I am interested to see where a lot of their more consistent damage is going to come from. I w it was pretty curious that they banned the cannon. It's not really a, a pick out of uh, Yoshishi up in the top lane, but this one certainly seems like it could fit the bill. Darius has been a champion that is on the rise here in solo queue, and they will lock it in. Champion's win rate has been pretty hot recently, so I want to give a lot of credit over to the side of Goth Boy Click because that is going to be a massive pain. Yeah, uh, especially in the side lane, in the one versus one. It's not like the Shivana here for VBU can really alleviate any pains this Orn might feel in their top side. Because um, Shivana ganks pre six, we don't talk about those here. <laughs> and um, I don't think those exist. Yep. Yeah. Just a fun old time getting whipped and chipped and dipped on down in that top lane. That's an interesting series of rhymes. But hey, Ari. Yeah, you know what? Ari fits pretty decently into this team composition. She really fits into a lot of team compositions. Let's be honest here. The champion is incredibly strong. And uh, it looks like the vein is going to be the lock in. Theoretically speaking, this could still go to the mid lane. It is really the ultimate flex at this point. Not quite sure if that's going to be the call for Night Saul. I have played one game of Vayne this season and have not played any games of Ziggs. So we will have to wait and see what happens as we uh, as we get into the actual draft. And we'll see where these teams go position-wise. So go for, you know, these team compositions are set. What do you what do you feel from these team compositions? Yeah, but click. They definitely feel like more of a pick sort of composition um you whittle them down potentially with the zaya with the karma and kind of the ari to a degree but then you also are able to finish off said poke with picks because you do have ari you do have darius with those resets you have nocturne with the paranoia uh goth boy click do have to worry about their composition being potentially a little short range here that might be a bit of an issue if the six gets going for vbu um but on the other side vbu i mean Looking like a standard front-to-back composition for me, it really depends what build the Shivana goes for, though, whether it's the AP or the more bruisery style. Right, and if they do opt to go into the AP, that means this vein is going to have to be the carry, the one that's going to be dealing all the damage. And obviously, it's mixed damage, but, you know, they're going to itemize heavily against magic damage is Goth Boy Click, if that is the case. So the on-hit build might behoove them a little bit more here. Um... So, mm -hmm. with the current lock-ins, it looks yeah. like the lane's going to Nightsaw L9 in the top lane. This is a champion that we sometimes see on rare occasion as a counter to these melees. Um, Darius, definitely one of the bigger ones. So, Wait, are they swapping? Are they sending Orn mid? Yeah. Um, it looks like we're gonna have Mario Maros. Marios. Okay, sometimes it's hard distinguishing between an I and R, but Marios is going to be going mid into the R from Hamlet. Are we sure? This seems kind of crazy, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, it's not unheard of to put tanks in the mid lane against control mages. Mm -hmm. uh, Ari, kind of a control mage, kind of a kite mage, kind of an assassin. She's a mix of all of them. Because you do get fairly bulky. You do have the extra tempo with the Forge God passive, just being able to build those items, get that early magic resist too with your mythic. It can help a lot and keep this Ari from taking you down. But yeah, it's definitely um not something we expected to say, say the least here, Yanni. I'm still not buying it, man. I don't know. But regardless, that is uh that is the current lock-ins that we have here. So 
I do think on the side of Gothboy Click, they're going to have a hard time kind of getting into a fight other than Nocturne's ultimate and Karma shielding plus um, the Shirelias. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you're going to have a really hard time getting in, but the pick potential that this team has is pretty strong with Darius, with Ari, even Zaya to a certain extent. It is certainly possible for them to get pick off kills. Meanwhile, on the other side for VBU, it's a complete polar opposite. This team wants to fight and brawl in 5v5s. Yeah. Um, still waiting to see the build here from Snoop Dogg in the jungle as the Shivana, though. Because if it is the full AP Shivana, then it's going to be kind of a bit of a weird platypus comp because you have the Ziggs and Shivana who are really great at poking, but then you have a bunch of Unga Bunga from the Vein, from the Leona, and the Orn as well, so... I'm expecting the AD Shivana. Um, that's definitely going to be what I'm keeping my eye on, though, to see which Shivana it exactly is. Did you just call this team composition a platypus? Yeah. You know, just kind of I don't, a mix. I don't understand the significance of that. You know, the platypus is a mix of a lot of different animals. Is it? <laughs> okay, not like that, but like it has a bunch of weird traits that other animals yes. have. Because like the beaver's tail, it has like a duck's beak. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I forget what else. Those Wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. You 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 pay attention to Pokemon at all? Just a little. How how recent are we talking? Like Sun and Moon? Uh I moderate a server for Pokemon trading, so. Excellent. Type null. That's exactly what a platypus is. Yeah. Just I a guess. bunch of just a bunch of random stuff put together. <laughs> just like yeah. Kind of like our cast. It's just a bunch of random casters getting put together. But we are into the spectator delay. We will not delay you with any more of our musings of Pokemon and Platypi. We are going to cut it to a very short break. When we return, we are going to get into the first game of this best of five between Goth Boy Click and VBU Infusion.
All right. Who's ready to sink their teeth into the first game on Summoner's Rift between Gothboy Click and VBU Infusion? VBU on the red side, Gothboy Click on the blue side. We still don't know where anybody's going just yet. You know, it could still be Vayne mid, could be Vayne top. Vayne's going ghost here. That's a pretty interesting decision. And so uh, far, nothing too crazy going on. Just chilling up in the top tri brush. The big chill, big chilling. You know how it is. Um, the ghost, I assume, is a direct response to the fact that Nightsaw is facing that Darius. Darius typically takes the ghost. So just being able to match that move speed with your own, pretty damn handy when it comes to staying out of Darius's range. Because uh, Darius has to get up in your face. And if he can't get up in your face, you're going to have a much better time in that one versus one. It will be a hard time. <laughs> Darius is trying to chase you all around. See, when Darius is chasing you, but you know you're going to get away, everything's fine. But when Darius is chasing you and you know you're going to die, that's not so great. Yeah. So you just just stay out of range. It's that easy. Just don't, right. don't, don't let Darius hook you, bro. It does look like this Ornn is in the mid lane, and I do have to ask, Ofrino, what are you expecting out of the series? How many games do you think we're getting? Uh, I honestly don't know. Well, I know we'll get at least three. And yes. you know what? I know I we'll give... at most get five. <laughs> okay, I technically give... we might get even more if Ooh. there's like some really weird remake situation that has to happen. Okay, um, I don't think that's going to happen. But... Most likely not. Um, granted, last week we did have that whole MacBook difference thing going on because oh, League yes. of Legends decided to put uh, Windows EXE files into the Mac update, which was um, a bit of a papega. <laughs> you know what? Feels papega, man. So, I didn't even think one of these teams was going to be here. I got to be honest with you. I pegged Gothboy Click as the worst team in the league in the preseason. And boy, did they prove me wrong. That said, I pegged, I pegged VBU as the third best team. And they finished fourth on a technicality, you know? One of the four teams that finished five and two in the league. So I'm pretty proud of the one prediction. Uh, not as proud of the other prediction, but yeah, but you get it. Uh, realistically speaking, I mean, these players, bo these teams boast some really, really strong players. I just don't know if Gothboy Click can get it done. Mm -hmm. And Gothboy Click's composition does have the chance of falling pretty flat because if Darius is not able to get ahead isn't able to get split pushing done isn't able to get the 1v1 done I feel like this composition from Gothboy Click while it won't fall apart it'll be on much much more uh, raggedy table legs to make a apt comparison oh, it does feel like it lacks a lot of ah uh, what's the word you know what? That's actually a good that's a good uh, analogy there. It feels like it lacks a lot of stability. It feels like you just have to pop off or you're going to lose the game. And just, you know, maybe that's the plan. Maybe that's Gothboy Click's plan is that everybody pops off and that's how we win the series. The good news is is that um VBU's composition really does not like hard counter you when you go in with say a Nocturne ultimate, that paranoia or oh there's no way they go for this. I mean, they can, but... Yeah, this seems a little over-aggressive here. Uh-oh, oh, Nightstall was a, bait, a little over-aggressive. He's going to flash. No, he condemned Overrate out of there. Nightstall is going to Wait. try to survive. It's first blood going to the Darius, but an immediate trade due to the turret. A miscue up in the top lane and give some extra gold over to the side of Gothboy Click. They're the ones who strike first. And that's still a very strong thing to do, though, because... Camping a top lane vein is one of the best ways of putting that champion behind because the champion needs to farm up, needs to get gold, needs to get some EXP as well to really have an impact on the game. Yes, you do get that counter kill, which is really nice, but the fact that you got first blood now means that Yoshi sitting on these tab eyes is going to have a much easier time in lane because you are taking that much less from the auto attacks with the passive, with the armor, but then also the move speed is so crucial because it lets you get on top of Night Saw that much easier by strutting on up. The good news for Night Saw is that Night Saw did not lose the Ghost, just expended the Flash. So until that goes down, it could be a little difficult for this Darius to find a way 
onto the vein as we see some ward trading going on here. And this bot lane's been pretty slow paced thus far. And it is something that we expected. And a lot of potential roams out for Leona and not too much lane action. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, especially with the focus that was top, it's not like Snoop Donk can really do too much gank-wise in this bot lane right now, unless we see Knight of the Zed and Nahor walk up way too far and then eat the full Leona CC combo from Sigify, but that's probably not happening. You have a Ziggs in the bot lane, you're probably going to be the ones pushing in most of the time. Well, it doesn't look like they are here, and it does look like Snoop Dunk is... Wants to maybe go for this dragon, wants to maybe gank bot lane. You see some pings going on it, and as Gothboy Click sees, a ward was cleared, and... Man, I'm just excited for when we eventually get into the mid-game as these teams start fighting. We really see what they're made of outside of the laning phase. Mm -hmm. And Hamlet, interestingly enough, going for a lot of roams already. Ooh, that was a big yeah. charm. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah, it's been more. moving around. Yeah. Um, goes to show that maybe Marios, I, that was my biggest question in my head. I didn't voice it during champion select, but it was, um, how well will Marios be able to keep the wave in their favor? Because yes, if you are able to absorb all the aggression from this Ari and just soak it on up, that's nice and all. But if the Ari from Hamlet just able to push in on you and then roam, mm, that kind of diminishes your effectiveness a lot which can be a huge issue. We've already seen that Ari Roam pay off in the top lane with that first blood here for Gothboy Click, and who knows when the next Deadly Roam might be coming out with just how often Hamlet seems to be trying to leave lane. It's going to be hard to manage if you are the side of VBU, but got to give a lot, <clears throat> got to give a lot of credit to Marios, who is up a pretty fair amount of CS. Snoop Dunk was spotted up in the top side, so it looked like they were setting up for a dragon fight, nice but they yeah. really just set up for a pick. On to Snoop Donk. Down you go. Mario has to flash over the wall. One for nothing as the entirety of Gothboy Click is there, save for Darius to help make a play. And uh -oh. now an engagement back onto the Sorn. Stun goes onto the Nocturne. The CC from Sigify is there. Sigify gets the kill into over eight, but Nehor will be able to slay Mario. Sigify flashing away, able to survive. Another one for one after that. The jungler, though, on the side of Gothboy Click goes down, which means. Ocean Drake stays alive for a couple more minutes. And kind of interesting that we didn't see an early dragon from VBU. Because uh, they did see Overwrite in that top lane with that first gank. Overwrite did stay up there for quite a while. Snoop Donk had bot side completely to themselves with Hamlet also in that top side. So could have argued, maybe could have gone for the dragon since Shivana does... Um, does get bonuses to armor and MR for each dragon she does slay. Kind of a really weird, like, cannibalism sort of passive, but hey, um, the lore or something. There can only be one dragon, even though there's six. Yeah. The other, no, technically seven. Because now you gotta count the other Drake and Shivana, right? I'm not and miscounting Aurelian the number of soul, dragons that exist, right? I am really in Soul 8. I am miscounting the amount of dragons that exist. Yeah. And I guess if you want to involve skins too, it gets even larger because, you know, the Does whole it? Dragon Tamer skin line. But yeah, like Dragon Tamer dragon. has Dragon Turrets. Oh no. You mean to tell me there's a theoretical infinite amount of dragons that exist in League of Legends? Um, at the same current time, Heimerdinger can only have three turrets down unless it's five at max turret rank. Well, you can minus one because the dragon going over to Gothboy Click. You're gonna get credit for the first Ocean Drake of the game. Hextech Drake coming up next. Come on, give us Infernal Soul. I want to see some damage in this game. We'll definitely, we'll definitely see damage. I mean, just gotta wait a little bit longer. You know, everybody's kind of taking a bit of a chill pill, which is a little interesting because Overweight does have the paranoia available once again. Can Ooh. look to make something happen, but top lane might be the call here. Snoop Dunk was spotted out by that Scryer's Bloom. And Night Saw, you, you gotta be careful, buddy. This Doesn't is how you matter. Do it. Doesn't matter. Snoop Dunk got the real prize. Does manage to claim that Eye of the Heralds. Interesting to see where they're gonna go with it. I mean, man, this, this composition looks so weird, right? Because, like, Snoop Dunk wants a lot of that gold. Yeah. 
Um, it looks like it's going for the more modern Shivana build, which is kind of a mix of AP, kind of a mix of tanky slash bruiser. Um, okay, oh, look at the bait. Off. It's all a bait. Uh oh, here Everyone comes baited. Over Flying in as the Shivana Yoshishi goes down. Overrate had gotten baited and outsmarted. A double kill for Snoop Dogg. Okay. Um, who made it who? We found out quick. Yeah. Uh, I wonder where they're going to put the Rift Herald now. You know? Well, it seems fairly obvious that Mario's getting a plate and also escaping as well. Absolutely massive lean victories here for the side of VBU. As they continue to take this turret down, and here comes Shelly. They're looking to break this lane all open early. This is first turret. Mm hmm. Okay, Hex Flash being channeled. More oh, more. Here's the that... stuns. The CC is layered perfectly. Do they have the damage to finish her off? They do. Mario's getting the kill. Great roam there by Sigify. Yep. Uh, that's the thing with Leona. If that Zenith Blade even touches you for a fraction of a second, you're dead. She's coming after you. Like, uh, you're not escaping that. You know? Very easy to kill someone when they're locked up for a total of, like, what, five or six seconds? You know? Yeah, it was, it was perfect CC by the entirety of VBU, really, just the, the mid laner and the support. Hey, As we see Sigify getting in here trying to make things happen. Overrate could be in a lot of trouble. Snoop Donk is here. Overrate's got nowhere to go. Snoop Donk on a killing spree. Just like that, Snoop Donk way ahead. Yeah. See those kills picked up here. In the blink nice of an eye. Mm -hmm. Nice Prima positioning to be in as well. Two minutes till the next dragon, though. And there's no Rift Herald available quite yet, so it's not like they can convert that free jungler kill into anything. Just a bit of gold, you know, dropping some... Yeah, deeper vision down. It, it's what you can do when you get a kill like this and there's no major objectives to take on up. But it does mean we are crawling to a little bit of a growing gold lead for the side of VBU despite being down early. They've uh, clawed their way back up to the top and then a little more. Yeah, still a heck of a lot of game to go and really that Shivana online early does mean there's multiple threats in this composition now. That is something that Gothboy Click needed to be worry about. And they didn't worry about it enough. They just let themselves get baited a couple of times and now they're down a little bit. So we will see how they respond to this. And when your Nocturne is behind early, that's not good. Yep. Um, thankfully you are a Nocturne. You're not super far behind. And you do have the paranoia. You just gotta find a place to drop that paranoia. Top lane seems like the most obvious example because it is the vein that is flashless right now. Well, they've lane swapped. This is pretty intelligent. Mm hmm. Let's see how it works out. It's directed cam just bringing us mm. here to uh, bot laners. Yeah, Sigify taking a lot of damage. Gonna be okay though. Is a it's a tanky bungus. Doesn't have any potions though. And See, Night Saw really wants to get aggressive here. Marios and Snoop Dunk awaiting the charm misses, and Night Saw is just going for it, forces the Ari ultimate out, and almost gets the kill anyway. Oh, okay. Night Saw stacked up the lethal tempo. I'm like, mm -hmm. Hmm. wait, that's a lot of attack speed for this early in the game. That's a lot of range, remember. too. Yeah. Uh, really good. Just poke down, though, right before this dragon. Coming up in about 15 seconds. You have Pryo over it. You have some vision in the river. You're going to make the enemy team have to walk into you. And you are going to have the man advantage as well. Um, I don't know if Gothboy Click wants to heavily contest this. Exhaust going out. Uh-oh. Snoop Dong getting in the thick of things. Tiny Asian boy getting credit for that one. Nahor is getting chased down. Forced away. And it looks like Gothboy Click is content with... Uh, I'm sorry. VBU content with getting the one kill. And they will turn their sights onto the dragon. Mario's TPing up to the top lane to prevent any further push or buy this Darius. Yep, really kind of questionable there from Gothboy Click, not gonna lie. You had the man disadvantage there. You're Darius, I'm Yoshishi. Split pushing that top lane did not have teleport either, so that was a hard sell either way, and you were still trying to hard force it. Um, not the best look, and this gold lead starting to grow a little bit further for VBU. Not out of control yet, but definitely at that point where it is pretty damn noticeable and they're going to be able to uh, bludgeon some fools with their wallets in specific lanes. 
And it just feels like they haven't been able to execute their strategy. They're just not looking for picks is what they excel at. And we'll see if Yoshishi wants to make a play here. Down a level on the Marios. We'll see if Marios wants to fight it out. He's just going to jump Get away there and find a way out. Good charm landed on the Night Saw, but Hamlet doesn't have anything else left in the tank. Well, that vein is charmed and will not be able to get any further damage. On the benefits of REY, she is loved by mid laners who play her right now. You just have so much safety when the spirit rush is on. Oh. Uh -oh. Having three flashes. There's a paranoia. That's a pretty forced play. Seems like the bottom lane of Nahor and Knight of the Zed were not prepared for that one. Perhaps not on the same page with their new jungler and. That's a long cooldown. And it also does kind of suck too, because this bot lane on paper looks really juicy to gank. It's this squishy Ziggs, it's this Leona who is very tempted to go in, but your bot laners are Zaya Karma, who are not really the best at following up on your paranoias, as they don't have like any immediate CC outside of the Zaya Blade Collar or some Rooster Feathers on down. And they don't have, like, the biggest nukes from a range outside of that mantra. Cute. Zenflade landing. This should be a kill. Oh, my God. Look at this damage coming in. Snoop Donk. Boom. Just a, so much damage at this point in the game. And doesn't even, hasn't even gone full damage. Just nine stacks on that Dark Seal. That is a fourth kill for the Angry Dragon. This is the more standard build now. Um, it's semi-bruisery, semi-AP. The early... Dark Seal, just a good pickup. There's the uh -oh. Warm coming on out. This could be a solo kill. Get him, Mario! Flash down from the mid laner turn top laner. And Yoshiji forced to walk away. And, I mean, when you're a Darius and you were losing a fight to an Orm, that is... That's gotta hurt the confidence just a little bit. Yeah, it, it doesn't help that uh, Yoshishi, I believe, was taking some damage from the turret. Um... That's one annoying thing about the Darius bleed passive. If you auto someone and then they're under turret, the entire duration of that bleed, you just kind of can't walk up or else you just get aggro drawn on you, which um, makes you get a lot of free damage you probably did not intend to do. But three to eight now is the score line. VVU. Hopping up to um, a solid lead. I mean, it's the same as the last time I brought up the gold lead, but still pretty solid. Okay. Let's see if we're going to see a fight here. doesn't look like it, and Nahor and Hamlet don't quite have the damage. Gothboy Click doesn't quite have the numbers, but they will have to back off. That is a flash expended by Sigify, but with Hex Flash, you don't really care. Mm -hmm. um, not having the flash for, like, an immediate Flash Zenith Blade will be a bit of a fuel's bad man, because uh, Flash Zenith Blade, a hell of a drug when it comes to just forcing plays. Oh, yeah. But like you said, not the end of the world. We still have the gold lead here. You can keep up this pressure, make sure some vital cooldowns are down, make sure your control is extended into this bot side jungle for this first Earth Dragon of the game coming up in 50 seconds. Because when you have this tankier bruisery Shivana, when you have this Leona, when you have this Orn, these little champions, they like a few Earth Dragons in their belt. You know, they like getting a little beefier, a little tankier, able to take more damage, and it'll be pretty damn handy against this not super consistent damage Gothboy click side. Oh, for sure. If there is a dragon that uh, VBU would have loved to have this game, it is the Earth Dragon. And the extra shielding for their carries, Ziggs and Vayne, not to be understated, as well as obviously making their tanky members even tankier. And realistically, it's going to be hard. Gothboy Click really can't afford to give up many of these dragons, let alone the soul. Yep. But at the same time, you got to kind of wonder, like, how are they going to be approaching this? They haven't really been able to make a lot of picks work since the very early stages of the game. This dragon's already dead. There's a Vayne hitting it. There's a Shivana hitting it. Yeah, you're not getting on top of that. They're trying to get what they can. They got more. that mid lane outer turret. See if they're able to get more. Good little apprehend. Here, here comes the ultimate through. Here comes the Ornhorn. It's only going to knock up one. It's a huge root. But it is a 5v4 as Yoshi she had fallen. The, oh available. no, they engage onto the Ari. Ari will be able to survive over eight, getting the kill on the Night Saw on the front side of the fight. 
but Overy unable to get any more on the backside. Snoop Donk is just absolutely beating on this Karma, diving the turret, taking a turret shot. Will manage to survive. Hamlet from the side looking to potentially get more. It's a two for one so far. Knight of the Zed gets blasted by the dragon's breath. They will fall and Man, you just can't do anything about that as an AD carry. A three for one overall for VBU, and they secured the dragon. And Knight of Zed has got to feel terrible there, because had that blade collar into the feather call landed there, the QE combo, that would have been a two for two. That would have finished off Snoop Dunk. But just a little bit off, you eat that dragon's breath, then you go down. Had you picked up that shutdown, different story. And for sure. Gothboy Click, much worse for wear after that one. Props to them. They did give it their hardest. Darndest. Yeah, and it was a pretty nice job of clearing the wave by Tiny Asian Boy, which meant that the mid lane turret was able to survive and help out just a little bit in that fight. And Gothboy Click, if they weren't desperate before, it looks like they're going to be real desperate now. There is a lot of ground to make up here. Yeah, um, definitely quite a bit, you know only ballooned to about a 6k gold lead nothing big and this is only the first game of the series you know so it is not the end of the world you know a lot of first games are the scouting game you know you want to know what you're going up against you know sometimes you know even the survey corps just wanted to know what they were going up against when they were you know were fighting giant titans many of them did not survive but you know yeah that's the beauty of this one goth boy click gets to play more games yeah Watched it. I only watched season one of Attack on Titan. Oh, lame Way back in the early 2000s. Uh oh. There's an engagement. Yeah, well, Nahor. Yeah. Nahor is just dead. Big shielding onto the vein, and the vein is now able to fight. Overrate will fall. Orn picks up another three for nothing in the top lane. Oh, Hamlet. If Hamlet can do anything, but Hamlet sees that everybody's full HP, they're going to try to engage on a Night Soul, oh, but they don't have the shield. damage to be able to take down Night Soul. The shield from the mythic item able to keep night saw a-okay immortal shield bow op baby and they will start on the baron yeah this game kind of done and dusted here already um for vbu you have these carries in the vein and the zigs pretty decently farmed working scaling on up they're gonna outscale adarius and lethality zaya when it comes to these team fights and you have such a beefy front line against this composition that's behind and already is kind of lacking damage to shred through tanks uh let alone tanks with uh you know a pretty big gold lead and some earth dragons under their belt yeah it's really not gonna get any easier i mean already does true damage that's nice and you know this is a four threat composition out of the side of gothboy click but Aside from Ari and Zaya, the other two threats are just way too far behind at this point to really make much of an impact. Yep. Okay. Uh, Objective bounty. Claimed yeah. by the minions. It's something. Yeah, you I know, mean, when, uh, when you're down this much, like, you can take anything, you know? They'll just be like, okay, why not? Give us some gold. Yeah, I mean, why not? It's a free 250 global gold. Hey, one. Well, yeah, I mean, you'll gladly take that. I miss yeah. so many. I miss so many gold generating things in League of Legends when Dragon used to just give gold instead of any abilities. Although I must say the souls are are pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's much more interesting. And uh, the big reason why they kind of changed it was back when it was with pure gold, it was worth getting early. But then you just had the dilemma of when you're ahead, you kind of don't need that gold, but you need to deny the gold from the enemy team. So you're just mm -hmm. kind of picking up this objective that doesn't really mean all that much to you. And you're like, okay. Like, hey, we'll get some gold. Woohoo, everything's okay, you know? But I mean, yep. a lot of gold <laughs> generation out of the game. Heart of gold gone, Philosopher's Stone gone. You can't play Bank Plank anymore. See, over eight looking for an engagement here, but my god, just evaporates. And now it's Knights all charging forward onto Knight of the Zed. Knight of the Zed has to flash away. Horn Horn will whiff completely. It's a double kill for Knight Saw. Looking for more. Give a triple kill over to Knight Saw. This vein in the top lane bringing the pain, baby. Oh. Yep. Uh, still a done and dusted deal. VBU just looking to march it on home. You have this ADC that can shred through turrets. You also have a Ziggs that can execute turrets and shred turrets themselves. So just uh you know walking it on in 
There's not too much hope left for the side of Gothway Click. But they are still in the game. They are still breathing. They are going to have super minions pouring into their base. Which means at least a little bit more gold. Third dragon of the game taken by the side of VBU. And these teams may have been close in the standings. But what a dominant performance it has been so far. Yeah. Because Gothway Click's team. We kind of mentioned it here. Their comp does kind of need to get a little ahead or it falls apart. Because they don't really have the best tank shredding. They don't really have the best team fighting. They're really all in on either just picking people off, resetting in team fights, or going for 1v1s. This is, uh... It's a really weird way to work a team comp. And not something we typically see. It's been a rough go for Goth Boy Click against some of the top teams in the league as... VBU considered a top team at this point, tied for first place at four, uh, five and two, but was given fourth based on breakers, as we know. And we got boy click against the top three teams, a one and three match record, three and seven in games, just a thirty percent win rate for this team against, you know, some of the better teams in the league. And again, here in game one, they are not able to. They haven't been able to get the job done so far. It's not over yet. But they need a lot to go right for them in order to take a victory here. Darius may be looking to kick things off of going in the right direction, but has been condemned against the wall. Has nowhere to go. Will flash on top of Mario. Nightsaw gets a kill off screen on to the Ari. It's a double kill for Nightsaw. Marios is bleeding, but Mario survives. Nahor has fallen as well. It's another triple kill for Nightsaw. Nine kills on the game for this player oh, absolutely yeah. bonkers here comes the nocturne into the bot lane every paranoia the nocturne has done nobody has died except for him and once again overrate will fall as the side of vbu pushes onto the top side here they are clearing out the minions they've got some supers coming down mid here comes the teleport as it looks like they are interested in just pushing to end of the game here mario's a little low does have teleport available if they wish to recall sigify Bringing up the rear as well. Hamlet has just respawned. And the Nexus turrets are under siege. See if Hamlet can do anything with these guys. The first turret has fallen. Lots of poke going down onto VBU though. Could see an opportunity. Yoshishi trying to find a way in. But no ghost, no flash means no engagement. This does look like VBU is just going to pull off. They take top uh, inhibitor turret and bottom inner turret as well. And they take some bodies beforehand as well. If we're looking for even more here. Dragon's Ascent. Okay, Zen the Blade just barely missing. Gothboy Click barely able to walk into their own jungle, as is tradition when you're this far behind. And Gothboy Click, they really just can't do anything right now. We see the double Athemo's chains coming out from VBU. And that's just dumpstering any potential damage or 1v1 or pick potential from Gothboy Click that much more. Because you're doing 30% less damage to this person. And you're not really doing a whole lot to begin with. Eh, good luck getting through this uh, potentially Mountain Salt, Orn, and Shabana in just a few minutes. Yeah, and it's, it's a shame. It seems like Gothboy Click, they've essentially become spectators in their own game. They just are powerless to do anything as they are just watching vbu take every resource available off of the map and you know they have their sights set on the baron next i think a goth boy click may have to make the call to fight up there yeah thing is though um we've seen them fight already they've tried some plays they've tried some picks and to say they have Falled flat to say that they have been called out, countered, and stopped in their tracks is a bit of an understatement. This Baron already fallen pretty low. Paranoia he goes. Gotta go in. Get it! Oh, it is secured by the Ziggs. Overrate is gone. Here comes the Ornhorn coming through. It's just gonna hit Yoshishi. Marios is on a rampage. Knights, although, could be dead here. Will tumble out of the way. Man, that combo! So much damage. Tiny Asian boy helping out the top laner. Knights all cleans up one more. Hamlet in the enemy jungle just has to recall as they will watch the onslaught of Baron minions go on to the base here. Marios has teleport available and the entirety of VBU will soon be here to finish off this last turret. Teleport is here. Marios 
is here. Hamlet does not even leave the fountain. Game one, a huge statement here by VBU. They came to play. Oh, for sure. And uh, Balfoy Click, they had that small early lead. VBU fighting back pretty damn well. We'll start it off with that beautiful counter gank in the top lane here from Snoop Dogg to help get Night Song far ahead in this top lane. And it kind of spiraled out of control, it felt like, from there very gradually. As Gothwai Click's team, like, they just weren't able to really do anything, it felt like. Even though they had these tools for picks, these tools for dives, for just jumping on top of people, it doesn't feel like they ever used it or ever got a chance to use said tools. Yeah, they were just behind, essentially, from the jump, aside from that, you know, early kill that they got. They were up maybe, like, what, 300 gold? after that first blood but one thing that we didn't really talk about is after that first blood like within two minutes vb were up like 500 gold and that was before any other kills had occurred so at that point in time i had an inkling that oh, this could be a game where vbu just sort of runs away with it and run away with it they did that's for damn sure um ending game number one not in the quickest fashion just a little over 30 minutes but still a little bit on the faster end of games here and a great way to start the series it is of course though best of five gothboy click have another two potential chances before they are sent home here yeah and when a team composition like vbu and what they brought out today uh, for game one that's really not something that they've played the entire season right so if you ban it out then they get to go back to their tried and true what they were doing all season long to finish five and two and I'm sure you don't want to go up against any of those scary compositions either. It seems like it's going to be a dilemma for Goth Boy Click. Mm -hmm. But that's a dilemma they will have to try and at least solve this next game. But we'll be right back after a quick break before we get into game number two of this Best of Five series. Shots high caliber round. If you know what's best, then you better get down.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here for the draft of game two between VBU versus Goth Boy Click. VBU came to play. They smacked up Goth Boy Click a little too hard in that first game. We will see how Goth Boy Click responds. We are here for the bans already. A ban change as Ziggs is going to be off the table, banned away. So it doesn't mean a Corky or an Udyr will be available. VBU getting rid of Graves, Morgana, and Lissandra. Three very solid bands does leave Zillion on the table. It's one of their favorite picks. That's the beauty of a five-game series. What starts off as permaban tends to slip through the cracks sometimes as Aww. the series goes on. Looks like Zillion's going to be the choice here for the final ban. VBU, with this all-powerful B1 pick, what do they want? Udyr. Yeah, we saw how successful they were last game with their flex potential, thanks to Ziggs, Vayne. Yep, that was the Udyr, as he predicted. I mean, yep. he was for a reason, and now mm -hmm. VBU can be piling the man bear pick. Yes, sir. That Udyr has been massive for Snoop Dunk in the last five games of the regular season. Winner on four of those games, and the one that they lost, they played uh, kind of okay-ish. Uh, so this is a champion that they've been riding a real hot streak on, and it's a champion that is starting to come back a little bit in the meta, and as we all know, Udyr is so annoying, you can always open up the gates on people. Okay. okay. Callista would have been a very interesting R1, that's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, the Udyr coming back into the meta, now that Turbo Chem Tank once again back on the board, Udyr slots in pretty damn well with the more generally tanky build. Um... Sometimes you'll see a little bit of damage through come through, but it is much more heavily spec towards that tankiness. Oh, boy, click. Just having a lot of champions here. Um, gonna hold up my tongue until we see the final pick. Ooh, okay, not all those bears, a lot of CC. Um, definitely a good chunk of burst. Very standard, though, if you have been watching League of Legends bot lane over the past two years. It is. It is pretty common at this point. That does mean that the AD carry options for VBU are a little bit more limited. You can't necessarily go something like a Zeri that doesn't have much mobility, as we know. Nautilus, the natural counter to Zeri because of the R button, does make life a little interesting. The engagement on the side of Gothboy Click is fairly okay, too. Samira and Rel are the lock-ins for VBU. I saw a combination of these two last night in a different league, and they absolutely ran the game, and I'm excited to see them piloted by two new players. Mm -hmm. I believe VBU might have also piloted this combo earlier in the season. Um, Much, much earlier. I'm talking like from the first few weeks. I might be misremembering, but it's a very familiar comp. With that bot lane combo, the Rel able to go in, the Samira able to chain off of it. The Rel also going to be giving the Samira some much needed resistances, but Gothwick Click with this Corky lock-in, if it is that more lethality oriented Varus, this more poke oriented quirky build, then Gothboy Click might not even be trying to interact with this Samira Rel Udir that want to get up close, that want to get in their faces here, Yanni, and just, you know, kind of start throwing up projectiles from afar and poke down any enemies that might try and get close. It is an absolutely great idea for Gothboy Click. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of it. You know, just having the long range poke, as you said. Just means these champions that run up on you are going to have a harder time unless they get some movement speed toward them or perhaps some some more long range harder engage. Uh, do want to point out that Samir Arel, it's the first time that these champions have been picked for the AD carry and support of Gothboy Click all season, I'm sorry, VBU all season long. So it's just completely new. VBU has come out with completely new strategies here in this best of five in the quarterfinals and they paid off for them in game one. We'll have to see if it pays off for them in game two. Gothboy clicks scarred by the strong vein. That will be banned. The victor falling by the wayside as well. Clearly aiming at Nightsaw here who has not selected anything yet. But the mid laner who's been able to put up a lot of kills. I'm sure they have a couple of other picks in their back pocket. Uh -huh. Gothboy click are gonna have to reveal either the jungle or top lane here. I have a feeling it's probably gonna be the jungle here. Let your top lane get that counter pick. We saw how big counter picking in top lane can be last game. Mm -hmm. Any top laners that have played solo queue can also attest to how bad it feels to get counter picked in top lane. So, back to see a jungler here. Um, top lane feels bad enough, you know? Oh, mm, mm, okay, okay. All right, all right. Gank in a can, gank in a can, everybody. 
It's Volibear, and, you know, is a great pick. You really can't say anything bad about Volibear. Brings plenty of damage, and, you know, like I, like I said, gank in a can. Mm -hmm. Has some build flexibility, too. Much more tanky in terms of builds this year. Can still go for a bit of a damagey bruisery build if you go that divine sunder or triforce first into much more tanky items i do expect it is probably just going to be a fat frontline volley bear here this time mm -hmm. around just absorb a bunch of damage from that all in be a fat shield here so the corky and varus can throw out their skill shots can whittle down the enemy team composition because now with his orn locked in bbu definitely drafting very heavy for the engage very heavy for the fights and the brand Ooh. now this is a very short range composition from vbu but a hell of an explosive composition when it comes to team fights absolutely and they went with a long range engage that i thought that they were going to need in the second half with the orn and the brands you know imagine a brand ultimate with a rel ultimate that's a lot of damage going out in such a short area the flames will be flying everywhere, and now it's on Gothboy Click. They're going to need to pick something here. It looks like they're hovering the Olaf. They're going to lock in the Olaf, so they may flex the Volibear or Olaf toward the top lane. Not sure which one they're going to want to play into Orn. I have to be quite honest with you. We haven't seen an Olaf in quite quite a few patches now. Yeah, I believe has pop popped up every once in a while, primarily in that jungle. Although it could be the top lane Olaf, like you mentioned. Um, I know it can be a little bit of a cheesy pick when it comes to 1v1 power. Because if you just walk up a little too far in that lane, level 1, trying to, say, drop a ward in the river, say, trying to just scout out who might be in that bush. It's just 1x, 2x, 3x. You're trying to run away and those axes just keep adding on up. Might be able to get a kill that way. We'll have heavy brawling power as well in that 1 versus 1. That is if it is the Olaf. Could also be the Volibear top. Does have some percentage health damage to help shred through tanks, but nowhere is near as good as the Olaf when it comes to that 1v1 damage. And the gank power of Olaf is just not as good as Volibear. You know, he's got some solid gank power to him, but Volibear's is just so much better. And, uh, you know, why not play the jungler that might be able to get your lanes ahead as opposed to a jungler that's going to have a harder time doing so. But... In the end, at levels of lead, levels of play like this, it is comfort. Comfort does reign supreme, so we will have to see where they end up going, and we'll probably find out very shortly as the cha the players are in the client champion select. Uh, just want to point out real quick on the other stream a huge game one upset, actually, as MSU took game one over Lotus. Yeah. Uh, I don't think many people expected that, to say the least. Um, you know, a little bit of an upset, but that is also best of five series. So, if you're watching this series, you should also be watching that one. You, you probably got you got you got two tabs. Listen, yeah. I know Google Chrome I mean, takes up a lot of room. That's that's why you get two monitors, so you yeah. can watch Blue Water League one and Blue Water League two. Oh, but exactly. It does look like it's gonna be the Volibear top four Yoshishi mm. more common thing. I was kind of getting a little hypey over the Olaf, though. I think it could have worked pretty decently well into the Orm. However, it is going to be that strong dueling 1v1 to deal with this Udyr, which can be very handy, given the Udyr's propensity for having just so much early game dueling power. Yeah, the Olaf can at least match him in fights. That said, it's still super hard to catch Udyr if Snoop Dogg is able to dance around the axes. I mean, Olaf's just going to be left holding the bag at this point. It's a lot of power taken out of your ganks as well. So any ganks made by over eight, they're going to have to execute them perfectly because you're not going to get as many opportunities. We'll see. Because there are options for the Olaf build. Mm -hmm. um, you could go Predator if you really want. Ooh. Um, that's a bit more old school. Of course, Conqueror much more common, especially since you can't. Could see the uh, turbo can tank Olaf potentially because that's just such a strong meta item. It's a flexible pick, just like the Udyr when it comes to builds. Probably going to be opting for the much more standard route though, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, I mean, like you said, so many options, so many different things that they can do. And it looks like we have a bit of a lobby error going on here 
Uh, so we have some stuff that is uh, that is going down that we need to fix. Um, so basically what we're just going to do is we're going to cut to a break here. And when we return, we will be in game for game two between VBU and Gothboy Click. Uh, so it will be a little bit longer of a break, but it still won't be that long. Hang with us. We'll be back shortly.
<laughs> no, he's just walking away to get his drink. I was going to say it's Yanni and Goferino on the cast, but it's actually just Yanni for right now. Uh, it is game yeah. two of the Blue Otter Diamond League quarterfinals. It's VBU Infusion versus Goth Boy Click. And in game one, VBU got the best of Goth Boy Click. And I, I mean, that might just be putting oh. it mildly. They laid the oh. smackdown on them. Game two, oh, Goth Boy Click. Looking for oh, something. Blood. A reversal of fortune. Come on. Fight! Ah, oh, so close. Ships passing in the night, as opposed to ships ready for the fight. Yeah, you could give boxing gloves to ships, I guess. Real quick, I think before, we really, here. before we really get into it, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, our, our beautiful producer for putting the uh, the little birthday hat on the otter. So thank you very much, Pop Tart. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's very very cute. As we see, a late invade coming in oh. here. Over eight is going to take the red buff. And on the top side, Snoop Dunk is going to get his blue, but the counter jungling coming in early here for Goth Boy Click. Something different from last game. Like to see that. And it is a leashless start. So, Nahor, Nyda Zed, and Hamlet all going to get back to lane on fine diddly time here. VBU might have a bit of an inkling of an idea given that Hamlet pathed up through the river and was walking up and not down relative. Like, Okay, it was walking, like, northwest and not yeah. southwest, I mean, if we're thinking of a compass. Because if they're walking southwest, then you can kind of assume that Corky was coming from blue. If they, they're they walking northwest, you kind of can assume that Corky's coming from here, red. Um, does not look like Snoop Donk completely sussing it out, though. Going for a full clear on their own side. Gonna be met by a bit of a missing red buff, though. Hey, what happened? Where's my red buff? And we see Knights all here taking it to Hamlet in the mid lane. Forcing a flash here on the solo trading, and that is something that you need to be aware of if you are Hamlet. His Night Saw is a force to be reckoned with in the mid lane and is looking to show it. The good news for Hamlet, though, as this Corky, after you get your tier, you can't just buy an early um, X Drinker and sit on it. That will give you a lot of just extra flexibility and survivability against this brand. Just given that brand very heavy into damage. And a bit of magic resist goes a long way against that burst mage, alongside with that little shield. You know, 1,300 gold investment to make your lane life that much easier. Always well appreciated, as we very well know by um, Seeker's Arm Guard. That's the item. I almost forgot. Yeah. Seeker's Arm Guard, pretty good. Gonna you know, uh, be a Maybe lot. Maybe not of... against Corky. But... Yeah, it's not so great against Corky, but it's just a good. It's a good item against anything that does physical damage. You know, and so you can get a little bit of AP out of it, as we see. Engagement here in the bot lane, but not a whole lot of damage coming out yet. Just some pretty good trading by Tiny Asian Boy and Sigify, as we mentioned, on a combination that we haven't seen them on at all this season. Very, very all-in focus sort of bot lane here. Even at the early levels, you don't need the Inferno trigger. You don't need the Magnet Storm essentially go in, especially if you happen to be able to jump on top Night of the Zed. Because if the Ferromancy lands onto Night of the Zed, you have that free passive follow-up dash in from Tiny Asian Boy. That's a lot of hurt to go on top of Knight of the Zed. All Knight of the Zed really has to do is survive for a little while and get the damage online so they can start poking away. It's something that happened to Gothboy Click uh, last game. They fell a little bit too far behind, and while their comp had some okay scaling to it, it was not good enough as they just gave up too many leads early as we see. Put here on the bot lane trying to clear out some wards, but doesn't really have anything to do. So, so far, these junglers just getting off full clears, although Overrates was a little bit more full. Mm -hmm. Considering Overrate happened to also steal the enemy red buff. Gonna be appreciating having this Iron Spike whip as well. A little bit of burst to add to your combos. A little bit of clear speed to add to your already pretty fast clear. Nice things to have. And on the other side, Snoop Dunk with the Ionian boots, so just getting that extra movement speed along with the cooldown reduction. So this bear, or man that is a bear and a phoenix and a turtle all in one, is moving a little bit faster. And uh, an Udyr moving faster is uh, not exactly something that anybody's particularly happy about, as we see yeah, over eight looking to show up here. Tiny Asian boy dissuading the engagement, but the ghost has been burnt. However, once again, it looks like Overeight and the bot lane of the side of Gothboy Click are just not on the same page.
However, they will turn their attention to the first dragon of the game. The Blade Rail, great tool for stopping those Nautilus dredge lines. There is a little bit of telegraph that comes out from that hook. If you are quick with your hands, pretty easy to block it. Um, so props to Tiny Asian Boy for that. Not the end of the world here for Overraid, though. Ghost, very low cooldown in terms of summoner spells. I believe only 180 seconds, so three minutes. Um, if you happen to have some summoner spell CDR thrown on in, which most junglers do, and so does Overraid. Even faster. Nahor, with Overraid, the here flash. Comes the flash. Oh, good flash there by Nightsall. Flash for flash, but the uh, Brand's flash may be a little bit more valuable at this point in the game. We saw Snoop Dong try to counter jungle the top side, but because of Overrate's clear Ooh, taking a little bit longer, threw off the timings. Here comes Snoop Dong. Looking to find something onto Yoshishi here. Just doesn't have the damage. And oh my god, takes a lot of damage from the Vala Baron. You know, we did say it's a champion that can pump out a lot of damage. Especially since Yoshishi having the press the attack here. Very easy to proc that with your auto. Bear Super Paw auto combo. Look for this, though. Overrave has an uh -oh. inkling of an idea going on in. Snoop Dunk. Hard to catch. Smite, fight. Smite, fight. Smite, fight. A Smite, little fight. unfair when uh, there's oh, a Oh, no. This is not one. fair at all. Hamlet. Just going to go over the wall there and help secure the blue buff. That one will go over to Overrave. Marios is here, but it looks like they don't want any fighting to go on here. As Nahor had made their way up from the bottom lane, leaving Knight of the Zed to fend from themselves. And once again, the jungle of Snoop Dogg being pillaged. X Flash being channeled. Knight Saw does him? have the distance, but does not have the back up. Oh. Nearly able to dodge out on that one. Now you're in enemy territory here, buddy. Um, yeah, this could be a problem. Knight Saw, maybe he's going to pretend he's a wolf here, but they are pinging him out. And they have fanned out, and they have figured out where this brand is. Hamlet, I'm going to finish off the kill, but uh, all is going to have to kind of kite it around and wait for a little bit. And he's going to die to the Corky here. It's going to be first blood going over to Hamlet. No assist for over eight. No minions taken for um, Nightsaw either. And it, it was a rather uneventful first blood. Yeah, a very long drawn one. We knew it was going to happen. It's just a matter of waiting. Hamlet, definitely very happy to pick up that first blood here as that Corgi who can scale very well. Uh, even with the more poke oriented build that we have been seeing rather than the more DPS traditional AD carry build. Um, still able to put out pretty decent scaling, all things considered, and looks to be rushing the man immune here. Not wanting the early hex drink for maybe a bit of burst protection, just all inning on stacking up that tier as, as fast as possible. Do respect that. And he had been poked out a little bit earlier in the lane. So this is a nice recovery for Hamlet here. You know, things didn't go so hot at first, but now starting to look their way. And as the game goes on, the Corky will only get stronger. Rift Herald will be claimed on the top side here for Snoop Donk. On the bottom side, Knight of the Zed has just been chilling out most of the game. Is looking to take a second plate here, which will put them very far ahead in gold. As well, he's about at a thousand right now, which is not exactly what we expected to see. Knight's all get engaged on by Hamlet. Overrate is here. They're going to turn on to Hamlet. Hamlet has to flash away. The exhaust is out, but the burn is way too strong. Snoop Donk has to try to run. Here comes Marios. He's going to knock one up with a call of the Forge God. They turn on to the Nautilus, and the Nautilus will fall. It is a two for one in favor of VBU. And again, something that we saw early in the last game where Gothboy Click had a small lead and VBU looked to wrestle it away. And VBU also has the... Okay. Someone, someone That's the for this play. Well played, well played. Knight of the Zed trying to run away. Rift Herald dropped and will get the charge off. So it's 160 gold apiece to the top laner of the jungle. Chains of Corruption. And he has an opportunity here. They're all lined up for it. They are, it is not going to land because of that wind wall that the Samira gets to put out. Lots of damage going down on the side of VBU as Yoshiji is pushing forward, unable to get the slow down, but lots of flashes burnt. It's a flash on Sigify, it's a flash on Marios. They're looking for the more here. though. Oh, Hamlet with this poke coming through. Might be able to try to find a way here if they can find the angle. And the horror giving plenty of vision. And this poke is starting to wear these guys down as you can see marios has taken a lot knight of the zed is here 
So it was over eight. This is, this is going to be so free. Knight of the Zed picks up the first one. Knight of the Zed picks up the second one. This Varus very far ahead. And Goth Boy Click this time around are able to get some back before the game could snowball toward VBU. And what great timing, too, here for Goth Boy Click. They pick up two kills on the bottom. They force the enemy AD carry back. The enemy jungler just forced to farm and deal with the scraps after that fight. So you get two kills, you get a plate, you get the second dragon of the game to help with your poke champs just scale that much better. And also, just make sure the enemy team won't be able to get a bit of a scale advantage on you themselves here. Yeah, she, she, not a lot of danger. Hey, let's see what happens. The damage turnaround, though. Snoop Dogg is in a lot of trouble. Has to run away. Night Saw flashing forward, finding the kill. But the turret helps out. And Yoshishi gets credit for that one. Night Saw manages to get a double kill. But here comes that ultimate out of the Nautilus. Here's Overrate. Overrate gets stunned. Overrate's unstoppable. Throws an axe. Gets the kill. Two for two in the end there in the top lane. Brand doing a hell of a lot of damage. As one would expect. The turret also doing a hell of a lot of damage. Very um, even game, though, if you yeah. look at the naked gold lead. Just for those sure. two dragons, really. Yeah, they're going to go a long way for these guys, especially uh, because Knights all deal a lot of damage, but might not be able to close out on some kills. So that Ocean Drake will help out a little bit. Uh, Infernal Soul is the soul for this game, which means the Infernal Map, which is a pretty big plus for the Udyr and the Olaf. Yeah, you know, less walls in the way. Great as these champions without dashes. It helps Nautilus a lot, too, come to think of it. Less yeah, walls in the way, you know? Champions, or just slippery champions in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, Hexflash. Okay. Oh, boo! It's always funny when they channel the Hexflash, like, I'm going in, I'm going in. Nah, JK. The joke's on me. I mean... I mean, they made the right move not to go in there because that's an, they're staring down an eclipse on the other side. Um, meanwhile, Samira just has some some garage sale items that are looking to turn them into an immortal shield bow, uh, but not so quite yet. So a little a little timid from the aggressive bot lane of Sigify in Tiny Asian Port. Mm -hmm. And they do have the ultimate advantage. And Ignite is up for Sigify. Um, Nahor's uh, Riptide, the, or not the Riptide, it's the... Um... Death Charge, Death Charge, as gang abilities mixed up. But that's back up now. There was that brief moment where it was down. You had both the Magnet Storm and the, uh... Fuck, almost Ooh. landing there. Yeah, I bet Nautilus is pretty happy that. Not the not bot lane. Snoop Dogg here, Knight Saw here, Magnus over it's here. The engagement, the Magnus Storm on three of them. Is Tiny Asian Boy gonna get in the thick of things? And the Inferno Trigger is popping off. The Interrupt is there. They do not have the damage to be able to take care of yeah. Night Saw as he's just on the side doing a bunch of damage. A big shutdown for the Udyr. Night Saw getting credit for one. Udyr gets credit for two. And just like that, it looks like VBU, they're hanging around in this game and they got a slight gold lead. Yeah, only 1,000 gold lead. Not really anything to write home about. It does also cost you some plates in that mid lane. It does mean Hamlet able to farm up even more on this Corky. But you'll take that. That's a definitive dub. And uh -oh. I don't think you get the... Actually, oh, oh. okay, not wanting to commit to it. Snoop Dogg, not tanky enough to tank multiple tower shots quite yet. Hamlet also having the flash. So I respect that. It's going to force Hamlet off the wave. Doesn't I'm let not Hamlet happy get... about it. Yeah. I'm not happy about it, but I understand. Yeah. Who, who knew the play-by-play -play caster wanting some blood? Listen, listen. I just want to like, I'm happy that we're getting a nice amount of action from this game. And that it's back and forth here because Goth Boy Click were just, you know, uh, they were in hospice after that first game, uh, after about 10 minutes in. As, you know, Shishi could Ooh, be a little bit trouble. It's unstoppable, as you mentioned. That Stormbringer was perfect. Uh... I think Nautilus is in a pretty bad spot here, from my expert opinion. Oh, He's able to put the dancing fun. shoes on. The ultimate is almost up here for Night Saw. The smite goes down. Oh. Nehor oh, trying okay. to survive, but Snoop Dogg is going to be able to pick that one up. They turn onto the Corky now, who did use the Valkyrie. Does have to flash away, but is now under the turret is Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg kiting, trying to run away oh, here as he's getting lower and lower. Yoshishi from the side. Who's the ultimate man. from the Varus? Yoshishi does have a flank. No ulti, though. Really? I believe VBU's Audi. 
Uh oh, they're looking for more here. Going on unstoppable is the Olaf, but he's gonna fall. They're gonna try to turn the fight. Sigify unable to get the Magnet Storm down. Big knockup by Marios. Lands onto the Varus. Knight of the Zed is about to be Knight of the wow. Dead, baby. Knight Saw picks up kill number six. But here comes the Corky with the wreck. He's looking for more. Oh, he just knocked up. He hasn't gotten a kill. He's got his shield. He will be able to get only an assist, though, as Nahor gets credit for the kill. Unfortunately, a lot of low health members walking away in Hamlet just wishes they could get in range for a rocket here. But huge fighting going on. VBU, take it. His health bar is low. You got Dragon. Do it. Run a rocket. Do Stop it. These rats. Stop the ports! Stop the ports! Can't stop the ports! Oh, Night Saul's gonna come out of nowhere! It's a well-timed Valkyrie, and they're gonna turn it around on Night Saul. A shutdown here for Hamlet. And that means the dragon is open! That is a big miscue there by the VBU mid laner. Just... I mean, Night Saw was really close on that one. Don't get me wrong here, Yanni. But Valkyrie, really great at just giving you that second flash whenever you happen to be in trouble. Hamlet ending up big after that fight off the back of that huge package, doing all that damage, picking up this kill. Now, Soul Point, Infernal Soul Point, I should say, for Gothboy Click. It's not a runaway gold lead for them. In fact, they are still down in naked gold, but having the crux of this Soul Point threatening an Infernal Soul when you have this quirky Varus poke combo. That's always something you have to fear and always something you have to respect, whether you're down 5k, whether you're up 5k, or whether it's basically dead even like we see right now. Yeah, that is going to be pretty ridiculous if Gothboy Click can manage to secure it. They've identified their win condition. It is the Drakes. So we'll have to see if EVU is able to really slow this plan down because they are going to run out of time soon. These carries on the side of Gothboy Click will scale pretty heavily. Now, Hora is definitely in danger. Does have some backup coming? Uh oh. Here we go. Over a burning That's the ghost. They've done the knockup onto the Udir. The Udir has been rooted. Here comes Call of the Forge God looking to interrupt this fight. Only one oh, knockup with onto the Nautilus. Not what you want. Here's the teleport. Yoshiji is here. On, tiny Ninja Boy trigger? getting in the thick of things. Is Inferno Trigger gets interrupted. Hamlet trying to kite away. Over a able to find the kill. Sigify falls over next. Yoshi are too and now. Bad. The Knight of the Zed is just untouched, Wait, surviving for so long. Here comes the turn. Knight's all over the I wall, looking to finish off the kill. Game. That's the damage that VBU needed. Overy in a 2v1, trying desperately to run away. He gets stunned, oh, he gets God. stunned again, and he gets blown up by the brand. It is an ace. It is a 5 for 3 in favor of VBU. Oh man, a bloody affair to say the least. It started off with Nahor getting kind of caught with their pants down, going for deep vision. It looks like Gothboy Click able to turn that one around, but this poke composition does not excel in these longer team fights here, Yanni. Neither Zed and Hamlet, they're not able to shred through this now force of nature Chemtank Udyr, just gunning <laughs> them down. Uh, force of nature, really great tool against Corky to say the least. And um, yes, they had enough damage on the back line, but once Night Saw flashed over that wall, dropped the Pyroclasm, just dropped the full kit, really. You're able to shred through these really fat walls in that Olaf, in that um, Volibear, in that Nautilus here. From then, it was all Ogre into this Rift Herald. You know what? It was an aggressive flash, but it was exactly what VBU needed. Their mid laner, knowing when they need to make the play and exactly what they have to do. It's such a valuable tool on this team. They're the strongest member in the game, really, it looks like, with seven kills to their name. You see on the other side, the junglers dueling pretty evenly, six kills apiece, but the infamous reverse scaling of Olaf, as people like to call it, weaker as the game goes on. Yep. Rains to be seen, because there is still quite a bit of League of Legends left to be played. Absolutely. We got, we got at least one more game after this, depending on what happens. But, I mean, this soul is going to be a massive fight. And realistically, any fight after that, as long as Gothboy Click doesn't outright lose the game, they will always have a chance to claim a soul. Yep. But VBU recognizing, hey, we have the naked gold lead. They don't have that soul yet. We have the actual, like, head-on five versus five long duration fight advantage here. So let's just force our way into their jungle. Let's drop some wards. Actually, they don't drop any wards, interestingly enough. Um, 
Okay, well, let's go establish some control. Think about <laughs> dropping some wards. Dip on out. Set up for this important dragon. Because you want to be there first. You want to force the fight when you can. Because if Goth Boy Click gets there first, they dictate when the fight starts, Yanni. And when they dictate when the fight starts, it means you're going to be eating up a lot of poke before they decide to fight. For sure. And this Corky really will be strong very soon. Still missing a Mythic, but once they get that Mythic, it'll be problematic. And we see on the other side, Varus still with a regular tier. And once that item gets upgraded, it'll get even worse. So this Dragon fight could be favored for VBU, but the next one, I'm not sure. That said, Corky just teleported back and has the package ready and raring to go. Dealing with the package when any objective is up is always a nightmare. Because if you want to, Hamlet just drops the package right here. You turn and burn on the dragon. And by the time the package expires, uh, dragon's already dead. Forcing That's their way nice in. nice move. Lift you. going down. Here comes Marios. Looking at a double knock. Will knock up the Corky. Flashes on the Corky. Trying to get him to burn the package. A huge play. The package comes through, but it doesn't but hit no, anybody. It to get one. It's a stun. They're going to find Sigify. It's a 5 and 3 currently. Nahor will yeah. fall. And it looks like VBU There's has not, a little bit too no damage. little damage. As all of the carries are dead, they turn it around on him. Hamlet is very low. Mario's chasing him down. Will be able to find the kill. Snoop Dogg still alive. Smite available. Mario's getting chased down by a very angry bear. Will be blasted by the blast cone. Over the wall goes Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, though, not long for this world will fall. And that means the soul is claimed by Goth Boy Click. It was a smart engagement by Mario's. But because they used the Coal of Forge God on just one member, they did not have it for the rest of the fight. The big Bungus unable to protect the carries and Goth Boy Click. While they lose some turrets, they get the ultimate prize. Yeah, because that's the thing. Props to VBU for recognizing, hey, their poke composition, they just want to tally away at us. But VBU was just so damn split up during that entire fight here, Yanni. I mean, Tiny Asian Boy walked around the long way, had to walk over the Corky package, burned down Ouch. to have health before they could finally go in and try and pop an Inferno trigger. And by then, it's like, without your Samara, without your brand, there Ooh. is zero damage on this composition. Yes, you could say the same to a certain degree about Gothboy Click's composition, but Gothboy Click's composition now has the Inferno Soul. Everybody's a DPS champion. Now, who are looking for an engagement here? Here comes the teleport. I'm going to Yoshizi. Sigify goes uh, in the yeah, middle. Like the five man ultimate. Are and, they going to combo this one? It's the knock the Inferno, Inferno trigger. trigger is a full cast Baron. there. It's going to force overrate far, far away. Night Saw manages to live on the backside. A double kill for Tiny Asian Boy. Night Saw manages to die on the backside. They're going to be able to find overrate as well. It is a four for two in favor of VBU. They have no quit in them. Yeah, just able to pick off Goth Boy Click with their pants down is VBU. Because of that Rift Herald they dropped before that huge, huge Dragon Soul fight, this is an open inhibitor that's going to give them so much leeway in forcing their way this game. Poke compositions, they like dictating the tempo of the game, but harder to dictate the tempo of the game when there are just super minions barreling down the mid lane. And when you can put that threat to work on this Baron that has spawned. Keep in mind, Naked Gold Lead still in favor of VBU here. Even though the Dragon Soul definitely tipping it very heavily in the favor of Goth Boy Click. VBU is not going down without a fight. Dragon Soul, Schmagon Soul, baby. That last fight, VBU. Huge engagement by Sigify. We don't need no stinking soul. We got ultimates, baby. Inferno Trigger, along with the Magnet Storm, just did so much work in that fight. And Goth Boy Click, they need to devote some CC to that Samira. They were doing so earlier in the game, and it was working. In that fight, they left her unchecked. Thankfully. Got... Okay, that's a big uh -oh. pick. They're yep. making the advantage play here. Call the Forge God is out. I don't think they're going for an engagement here. They are able to pick Sigify. That's a 30-second death timer without the engagement here for VBU. And you can see the damage starting to pile up. Night Saw getting lower and lower. Oof. Yep. One thing I'm curious about, though, is Hamlet. I would like to argue maybe the Leandres would have been the better schmoof this game just to deal with all this HP stacking on the enemy team. Uh, 
That'd be really nice. That's a nitpick though. That aside, it was a nice little pick. Not gonna translate into much. Uh oh, that Yoshishi, you can't block uh -oh. that one. They found Tiny Asian Boy. Tiny Asian Boy sliding out will be knocked up. They're gonna turn off the turret. They Tiny Asian Boy is falling on the backside of the fight. Snoop Donk doing his thing. The Night Saw doing a lot of damage. Yoshishi under the turret. Sigify pulls him in. Will die to the turret. On the other side, Snoop Donk and Marios getting the better of over right here. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, it's a four for one for VBU. The tables, they're turning back and forth, back and forth. Teams trading fights. And now, Nahor is the only one left standing for at least seconds. 20 seconds. It's a 4v1. They're trying to pull everybody else away. They need to stop this push soon. You cannot afford seconds. to go down. Sigify, very low. They're starting on the Nexus turrets. They want to go for the win right here. Oh, you gotta be quick. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. The 80 carries are spawning right back up. Mario. Well, no, he yeah. died. He died. He's not this. able to get the call. The forge got off. They're going to try to get some picks here. Sigify is low. Hamlet needs to get closer. Knight oh, of the Zed Hamlet just got pushing, package. Trying Hamlet to get more. Package. Oh, package is up. Okay. You're right. He's teleporting behind them. Oh, Hamlet no. trying to make the hero play. Hamlet on the backside. Oh, runs right into Snoop Dogg and gets stunned up. Hamlet needs to package the heck out of there. Knight's all Hamlet flashing forward to kill Hamlet. Hamlet flash from flash. They knock off the brand. The brand is dead. They're going to okay, push forward. They found Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg trying desperately to run away. Has plenty of movement up speed. Up. Is up able up. to back off. But Night Saul is down. The close quarter damage is not available for VBU. And Gokboy Click starts the Baron. Oh, boy. What a back and forth. It all starts with that initial fight in the mid lane, that four for two. Gothboy Click, they have this super heavy poke composition. They're not designed to go full on in your face on Gabanga, even with the Infernal Soul. Yes, that helps, but all these fat tanks get shredded by Night Saw's brand. Props to BBU for winning that, and they're so damn close to finishing it. But the respawn timer is just a little too short. They now have to contend with a Baron buff. Do still have the super minions barreling down mid lane, which will slightly decrease that. But I don't think we're going to be thinking too much about super minions or Baron buff here with this Elder Dragon spawning in just a few seconds. That said, if Gothboy Click uses the Baron buff properly, they may be able to get a fairly free soul. They just want to brawl it out here, though. Sigify, you can see they're looking for an angle, but they take so much damage. They do have the flash available. We'll see what ends up happening as the poke continues to land. The bot lane is pushing toward the side of Gothboy Click. They could get somebody down there if they wanted to, but it looks like they're just content to straight up 5v5. Here comes the Golden Sword God. Who is it going to land on? It whiffs completely. Sigify is going golden. They go for the knockup onto Snoop Dogg. Overrate is here. Here comes the Magnet Storm. It's going to land. Here comes the Pyroclasm. Lots of damage going out. Tiny Asian Boy trying to do the Inferno Trigger. And they do. They get off enough damage. Yoshizi, very, very low. They found Ray the Zed. It's a 2v1. The Ghost is on. And Yoshizi has become the Ghost. As they will fall very shortly. A huge triple kill for Night Saw. As getting in there. Tiny Asian Boy and Sigify doing so much for this team. They're looking to end the game once again. 20 respawn. seconds on Nautilus. And you have those respawn. We got 15 seconds. It's just these two players. The full tank Udyr, this AP brand, not known for their turret taking prowess, but they do have a wave. They do have time to work with. 20. Is it going to be enough? 22 kills down. between these back. guys. Here comes Hamlet. They're the exhaust on the Night Soul. Night Soul goes down. Do they have Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg yeah, trying to do what he can, but he will fall. And the Nexus and the hopes of Goth Boy Click survive. Let me check in the base. No wards were placed, so there is no potential for a teleport backdoor from Mario's. Five versus three is the map state in favor of Goth Boy Click. There's a elder dragon on the table this poke composition moving on down towards it there is no smite to contest it definitely on a knife's edge is this game a lot of it off the back of the team fighting power that is brand plus samir the hook landing five versus three even when you don't have a team fighting comp can be pretty damn potent that's the elder gonna help uh -oh. patch up a lot of these team fight weaknesses 
and help finish off some people that might be harder to kill for Goth Boy Click. They have something a little bit bigger than a team fight weakness, a lack of Nexus turrets and a lack of inhibitor. Like you said, there was no teleport expend or no wards placed, so there's no way to teleport into the base. And I don't even know if Mario's would be able to have the damage. Here comes the Corky teleporting in, and no package available. As it looks like Goth Boy Click, they're looking to try to end this game. They've got a small minion wave, no Baron left. VBU can tend to let them have the turret and the inhibitor. VBU willing to give up a lot here, the smart play. Uh, thing is, though, it looks like Gothboy Click, I don't know if they want to force this. They have the poke. They do have poke, but with how close we are to the fountain and how tanky these members are, Orin Farn, gonna be an Orin Farn. It's just to clear the wave, there. bro. It's just to clear the wave. That's a wave clear one, just to make sure that they survive and they're trying to delay this, uh, this uh, Elder Strike. Oh, and make sure that they yeah. don't fall and you can see the poke coming out hot and heavy they have their own oh, super minions going to be spawning very shortly so they're able to clear out these waves it's hard though they don't really have range for that just gotta keep it on going the elder is ticking away though about 40 percent left keep in so he's gonna okay. pull the trigger and it's snoop dog pulling the trigger getting knocked up here comes the magnet storm it's pulling in the elder on the cool. back side though sickify will fall on the other side the olaf goes down it's now a 4v4 jungler gone for the side of goth boy click support gone for the side of vbu that's a big engage tool Elders got a quarter left here they're doing a good job of running out this elder drake Hamlet Whoa. and Knight of the Zed need to start landing more pump. Knight falls low. Knight Saul needs to survive. Knight Saul gets killed. Snoop Dogg on the back end trying to kill Knight of the Zed. He's got a lot of HP. No, tiny Asian boy falls as well. Snoop Dogg trying to keep it all alive. Hamlet dies. And VPU desperately hangs on. No flipping Fortnite way in Sam Hell. Did that just happen? Hamlet so close there was but a sliver of health between Marios and dropping to that elder buff. After what was such a long-winded affair, these two Nexus turrets standing strong for the side of VBU. It's game all but over, and I think we still have a little bit longer. 20 seconds till the next Baron. Everyone will be up on the table. Hamlet will also have the package to be able to get there in time. The question is, who will be able to get there first and start establishing control here, Yanni? I have casted a lot of fun games in my day, but this is a certified banger, Goferino. It is still anybody's game. Who would have thought a team with an exposed Nexus and a team in the base trying to take down the opposite Nexus with Elder Drake? Both sides unable to finish the game. The grit and determination that both of these teams have brought for game two is impressive. I also like how we've gotten so far into the game that supports actually have items. Like, oh wow. We see a Vigilant Wardstone. That's a, yeah. that's a fully stacked um, Sightstone upgrade. Like, how often do you see that? Not often enough. That's how enough. far in the damn game we are. Mid lane pushing on up though, and with this mid lane inhibitor respawning for Goth Boy Click, they do have first dibs over the Baron. They will have this prio. I believe Hamlet does still have the package as well. So, Goth Boy Click gonna get their second Baron of the game. Weren't able to do a lot with it last time, all things considered. But maybe now, with that mid lane pushed on in, they can look to pressure some other lanes here. And really just start trying to bring it on home. Because poke comps love having the Baron buff. It lets them siege. It lets them sit back. It lets them poke. The call is to nay ram it on up here. I'm getting a bit of deja vu here, Yanni. Just well, last time one around, mix up with another. Last time around, you know, Elder buff does not buff the minions. And it doesn't look like Gothboy Click is going to back off. thought they may have had an opportunity to, you know, potentially keep banging down in the mid lane but i like what they're doing here they're gonna try to stretch the map a little bit here with super minions pouring out of the mid lane yeah as tempting as it as no as tempting as it is let the super minions do the work for you all five members of vbu are in this bot lane those supers crashing on in vbu has to back on off has to protect their base here because one super minion 
will heavily damage one of these Nexus turrets. Now to rally around this turret before the Pope comes on in. Yoshishi in a bit of danger. Ornhorn, bear. Oh, it's going to hit too. Here comes Sigify in the back line. Tiny Asian boy Hamlet, gets knocked yeah. up. Tiny Asian boy is dead. But Mario and Snoop Dogg so much. It's a double kill, but Night Saw is dead. Do it's anything. now a 4v1, make it a 3v1. Snoop Dogg trying to survive, doing it's what he can. He's so damn him. tanky, baby. They don't deal any damage to this man. He's been rooted. He's been CC'd. He finally falls. And I think that is it. The ace has come out 20 seconds on the rel. Three bonuses. They don't do a lot of damage, but they got a lot of buffed up minions. Goth boy click fight hard. Goth boy click win game two. Great. Googly Mowgly. That was one hell of a coaster ride here, Yanni. Um, even it felt up until the very end. It looked like VBU. They were so damn close. They had two times where... They had nearly pushed for the win. Not able to secure it because of those pesky damn death timers here, though, Yanni. And now we are one to one in the series. Guaranteed to go to game number four here. A very exciting precedent set by this. Even though VBU had a metric ton of damage, even though they had the team fight advantage, it's just those buffs coming through that Elder Dragon, the Baron buff, the Infernal Soul, just kind of feeling like they broke the camel's back. I get to say it, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a series, baby. All knotted up at one apiece. What a crazy game by both sides. And emotional exhaustion is a real, real thing. Interested to see how the side of VBU is going to come out coming into game three. Because when you fall back like that in a game and you kind of just aren't able to get yourself across the finish line... You can come out flat in the next game. Yeah. Um, you do have to remember, though, VBU did win that game number one pretty handily, and Gothboy Click able to reset the mental coming into this one. Um, so, we'll see what the vibe is in the next game here, because these are two radically different games that we saw here, Yanni. And I'm excited for what game three has in store for us on the other side of the break. I would like game three to be more like game two. <laughs> I think most of us would. But catch all our lovely viewers on the flip side. We'll be back in just a minute with game number three.
stop for a minute, get a fun example. What is going on, everybody? We have returned. It's Yanni. It's Goferino. It's Goth Boy Click. It's VBU. It's game three and a 1 1 series after an absolute banger of a game if you missed it go back and watch the vod after this if you have friends who missed it get their ass in here now because this series is gonna be awesome also pop track alexis here he can't I mean, forget about our producers oh of course not of course not yeah. you know we got the party hat you know of course of That's course true. we can't forget about the producer you know There's no, no party hat. Always shout out the producer at the end of the stream. You know, we, we, we're respectful. Yeah, the here. one time we shout out producer at the end of the stream. Come on. Listen, it goes it goes in the outro, you know? It goes in the outro. But we're getting into the intro of the picking bands here. As Gothboy Click, they've submitted their first three bands. It's Pantheon, it's Shivana, it's Udyr. They're clearly targeting Jungler here. They want to make sure that nothing crazy happens. Snoop Dogg has had a hell of a series so far. And that Pantheon is probably going to stay banned for the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. What what does slip through the cracks here? Because there is no Zillion ban this time. Mm -hmm. That has mm -hmm. been banned mm -hmm. all the series. There are other power picks available on the board here that Gothboy Click can pick up. Jinx still a very potent AD carry. Has been taken down a notch though. Corky also still available. That and that too. brand, that brand that had a great game is also still on the table. Gothboy Click taking their time okay. here, and they will opt into the Jinx. Not entirely unsurprising. One of the best champions that you can first pick. Mm -hmm. Very flexible. You can build a comp around the Jinx. You can squish a Jinx into a comp. Yes, Jinx doesn't fit into every comp, but you can fit Jinx into a lot of comps. The question is, okay, there's the Ziggs we saw game one. Is it going to be paired with the Leona again? No, the Nocturne that was pulled out by Gothboy Click now can be violated by BBU this time around. Very great way of dealing with Jinx, because even if Jinx tries to Gale Force away, the Jinx is still in your Fear Tether range. Combine the Paranoia 
with an auto attack, with that Duskbringer Q, and a Ziggs Mega Inferno Bomb, that, Jinx that should is be one very dead Jinx. Yeah. Jinx is absolutely going to get destroyed in that no. case. We'll see if Gothboy Click is able to do things to keep her safe. Gank in a can, baby. Hopefully this time we'll see it in the jungle, but we saw Gothboy Click did pull it out in the top lane last game. Do you expect Gothboy Click to probably lock in their midder support here? Keep it in the dark as to where the bear is going? Corky, the Corky, last Corky, time around. Corky. All right, Victor works too. Yeah. Kind of similar to the Crow. Oh, the here game. we go, baby. That's It's zillion time. Oh, there's responses. But that is both a really good and really terrible response to the Nocturne Ziggs combo in that... You put the Chrono Shift on the Jinx when she gets jumped. But the thing about the Paranoia is, unless you're like within 500 units of this Jinx as the Zillion, by the time you see the Jinx to pop Chrono Shift, there might not be a Jinx anymore. VBU though, with the Corky Ziggs, that is a lot of long range AP poke here from them. And um, it does mean that Gothboy Click, if they do itemize, say, um, some uh, spirit visages slash the force of nature's here. It can really hinder a lot of VBU's damage output so far. We do have yet to see the top laner here, and I want to see how VBU's comp comes together in this second part of the draft. Yeah, as we we already know what Gothboy Click's comp is doing. They're trying to protect this Jinx, especially with that Zillion pick. Hamlet has performed pretty well on Victor throughout the season. Only one game on Zillion. It was a 4-0 and 8 performance in a winning effort. So we will have to see what they pair up with the rest of the squad. Bans coming out. The Soraka is gone. That's a solid ban from VBU, making sure the Jinx is not able to stay at high health for very long. They're also going to take out the Seraphine, able to protect the Jinx, able to engage a fight. On the other side, Gothboy Click will finally ban the Orn. Orn has been a thorn in the side for uh, Gothboy Click. Even though they're 1-1, one one, it's had pretty good impact. Although in that last game, not as much. And then Jace is also another band, so kind of a duality they don't want to see in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make top lane's life as easy as possible. Um, I would have erred towards the side of maybe taking away some engage supports. There's Gangplank. Okay, so VPU with the Corky Ziggs Gangplank, that is a lot of like super long range poke and zone control. But the Nocturne does not fit in with those champions it's a bit similar to game number one's goth boy click composition but a little more exacerbated um, we'll see what the last pick is in support i do want to see another dive buddy for this nocturne at the very least from bbu he needs somebody and sigh yeah. on the pickup here for goth boy click will just be able to be a big bungus at the end of the game possibly split pushing the game away with a hole breaker and a prowler's claw Gangplank is going to have a hard time trying to make anything happen against the Scion. If it is the Lethality Scion, most likely going to be that Tank Scion. Um, okay. Just flipping through some things. I mean, it could be a support Zillion. It could be. Yeah. And they and did, and they did do that. that. So, okay. Ari into the Quirky is interesting in that the Ari with the Charm can't stop Quirky Valkyrie. Um, I don't think it stops the package since that should be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Big is. thing is though that like last game, the Corky can get that early hex drinker and that sucks major, major bad vibes for the Ari who has nowhere near as much damage and burst potential as that brand. Um, so Gothboy Click got me really looking to get this Ari roaming around the map. Do you also have the Scion? do also have the zillion and vola bear in that jungle as well so you can make some pretty big gank parties in whichever lane you do happen to visit oh for sure and i like the nautilus pickup it's going to be able to throw the depth charge onto the jinx and make it very hard on this jinx to be able to survive and make anything happen but this team comp is such an enabler team comp for this jinx the scion's gonna go off and split push and is gonna make these fights uneven because somebody needs to answer them Volibear is going to be get in there, going to be able to get in there, be a big bungus and tank up some damage. Ari from the side, landing charms being an overall nuisance. That's so much that VBU has to worry about. And then you have Jinx just firing rockets from the back line. Mm -hmm. Although, on the flip side, VBU, I mean, 
they have this super long range poke composition and Gothboy Click outside of the Scion Unstoppable Onslaught and kind of the Stormbringer don't have the best super long range methods to engage on top of you. Um, I do really expect a Shirelius coming out from the Zillion being piloted in the bot lane just to help close that gap. Um, we'll see though, because it is a little bit of a similar dynamic as last game, except the poke composition is no longer like two poke champions and three fatties. It's like three poke champions and two ungabunga champions. Yeah, it just feels like a bit of a mismatch here. I suppose that Gangplank doesn't play nearly as far back as Ziggs and Corky. So you have that going for you, but none of these champions can really follow up a dive. Ziggs with his ultimate certainly has some damage there, but he's very far behind. The bombs aren't really going to reach anybody if they're already running away. And Corky can certainly get in there with the Valkyrie uh, on the package. But other than that, not a good dive, buddy. And Nautilus is the, the solo tank in this composition. Does mean that is really going to have to be tanking all these turrets along with a lot of damage on these dives. And realistically, he's not as tanky as he once was. We could see the Aftershock like we saw last game. Um, even though the Glacial Augment is much more common now and can be very handy given how squishy your team is. But given how squishy your team is, that also means that it places a lot more value on you yourself being tanky. So, it's a, it's a trade-off either way you go and realistically i figure that if vbu gets what they want when it comes to dictating the pace of this game dictating when fights start getting everything in hunky dory ways oh hello okay getting everything their way um they're gonna be poking you down quite a bit they get a big barrel they get a big rocket something along those lines Follow that up with a Mega Inferno Bomb, follow that up with the Paranoia, with the Dredge Line, with that Depth Charge, and just burst out a few members that have already been whittled on down. Well, we will have to see how Gothboy comes to play this game. Hamlet does need to show up big time. Not the greatest of performances on that Ari and game number one. See if they can bounce back for game three. Uh, the champion select was almost finished. We had a small lobby error, much like we did the last game. I promise we're not trying to hold out any super secret tech and conversation about the team comps. But this does mean we are going to kick it to a bit of a longer break. About the same as last time, maybe a little bit less. Maybe go get some water, throw something in the microwave, and come back quickly for game three between VBU and Gothboy Click.
Ganks by Cat was our producer. That is the small delay. Uh -oh. Flash. Oh. Okay. Flash for flash. All right, back to okay. rambling here. Okay. What are no, we rambling? But, um, <laughs> that is pretty big. All five members were spotted in that mid lane. So this means now both Goth Boy Click. You know what this and means? VBU. You know what this means? They That's might right. just all run into each other, or it might just be like vertical jungling. I feel like it's gonna be. Oh wait, 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 wait. Go for you know. You know what this means? Oh uh, wait, no. I think Sigfly was spotted by the turret with that pathing. It's free real estate. Wait, wait. They're wait. staying. Wait, this they're might staying. not be free real estate. If somebody wait, backs wait, you, wait, this wait. Could be Hold on. This might just be cash money as shit. Oh, wait. Oh, they they, they didn't cancel the backs. Wait a minute. Bro, I don't know what's going to happen here. That ward is here, too. Mm -hmm. Sweep's so not available, either. They, step out. they do, Wait, they do have a sweeper. Or it's not available. But, uh, yeah. So it is spotted out. Mm -hmm. I know this is happening. We got debated like, four times. Which is Giga Papega. Edging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's about as... It's about as far as I'll go, I promise. Yeah. Junglers starting on, uh, well, Snoop Dogg starting on his buff. Overrate decided to take a bite out of the red buff. We'll move down to the chickens, and Snoop Dogg will get a free move into the red buff. We'll be spotted. The pings are out. But nothing that anybody's really going to do about it. Oh, wait. Look at this gank path in the mid lane. Level two gank. It's gank in a can. Wait, wait a no, minute. Look Why at the party in the bot lane. Hold on. What's happening? Here comes Hamlet. Nahor is here. A tiny it is Asian slow. boy is too far away. Snoop Dogg exhausted. Gets the spike. Gets the red. The fear is on. Nahor getting lower, but so is Snoop wait. Dogg. Knight of the Zed is going to get first. No, it's not going to be first blood for Knight of the Zed. It's Kidding. for Hamlet. Sigify is going to get one back. The charm is out. Oh, Knight of the Zed no. gets another two for one in favor of Goth Boy Click. Once again with an early lead. Oh my lord. And that is a devastating early game lead here. Don't let the gold lead fool you. Because those are the two big carries each getting a kill. One of which was first blood. And also, almost as important, the fact that Snoop Donk goes in for that invade, dies, means that they won't be having either blue or red buff to clear their jungle and it delays the all-important level 6 spike where Nocturne can really look for those ganks. Really, really tragic start, and Hamlet with these double buffs can just go ham to hell and high luck with the mana regen and with the health regen. Snoop Dogg, though, while he does have no maidens and no buffs, he does have a Scuttle Crab, the bottom one to be exact. Junglers will be trading off the Scuttle Crabs here as... Overrate still has a blue buff that they haven't gotten to yet, and they will start working on that one right now. A kill onto the Jinx, a kill onto the Ari. It's exactly what you wanted. Snoop Dogg showing up in the mid lane, trying to force Ari off the wave. As uh, they gave away the double buff, and that's channeled. never good. Sigify with the engagement here. Tiny Asian Boy and Sigify with the Zigs are looking to go full aggression here, forcing the flash out of Knight of the Zep. Oof. Yeah. A little too aggressive. I was about to bring that up because those two kills are very big, but you can't spend the gold just quite yet. You hadn't backed. So it's really just the EXP lead for now. And then also potential stacks in any of the Hunter runes or the uh, Legend runes and the yellow and red trees, respect. Well, the red and yellow tree, respectively. Yeah, I mean, those stacks are pretty important, you know, whenever you get an assist, get they a kill, help. you know, just they, they do help. It's the, the incremental advantages oh, that can do so robot. much. Sigify moving up here. The charm is out. Does get rooted, though, and that's plenty of damage here for Night Saul. Night Saul will get credit for the first kill. As you said, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 111, not quite 305, but I'm sure you'll take it all the same. Um, no worries. On the wrong side of the tracks, here comes Yoshishi. Snoop Dunk stunned up. Marios does not want to give up any of these flash, minions. Flash. flash by Sigify. Pretty much on cooldown all game long. Mario's taking a lot of damage. He's going to eat oranges, and it's all okay. Ignite down into overrate. Overrate oh, will fall. Finish. Marios, the flash, and Yoshishi will fall as well. Zombie Scion unable to get the movement speed rooted up and is now gone. Two for nothing there on a nice top skirmish for VBU. 
Huge, huge there by VBU. With these roams, just to punish that top lane play, and also just punish Hamlet in the mid lane here. Now they are the ones finding themselves in the gold lead here and the kill lead. This Nocturne that had been put very far behind thanks to that one early death. Now up to one, feeling pretty fine and dandy. With all that attention topside though, with the fact that Snoop Dogg has to go back and purchase some items. First Dragon gonna be going over to Gothboy Click once again. They will be appreciating that Infernal Dragon to help the Jinx hit critical mass that much sooner. To help this Ari secure some kills that might not have been possible beforehand. Always nice to have in the back pocket and as a bit of a consolation prize after you lost that top lane fight 0-2. This game playing out much like the earlier games with Gothboy Click getting an initial lead and then VBU kind of bringing it back. Last time around in game two, Gothboy Click managed to retake the lead and while it was tenuous and it was back and forth, ultimately did hang on to a gold lead for a majority of the game. See what happens this time around as the scaling of the Ziggs oh, is land. good and Sigify is just in his bag right now. Has played so well so far this game. Oh. Trade going slightly in favor of Gothboy Click on the bot side. Snoop Dogg in the area, unable to do much, but hooks like that, Sigify will certainly carry VBU to victory. Especially when there is a paranoia to back it up. It is still a level 5 Nocturne. This time around, Overrate is the one in the area. Great slowdown. This should be oh, an easy stun. problem. Sigify is in a lot of trouble. Here comes Overrate. Sigify's got no flash. They're going to give this one over to the Jinx. It's a second kill for Knight of the Zed. Man, I caster cursed him. He was having such a good game. Yep. Kind of unfortunate. Um... That's the thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Because once you go in as Nala, it's very hard to get out. But then also, if you don't land that hook onto Nahor, it is very easy for Nahor to use the time warp on you. Slow you down by 99% when it is at max rank. Although, fun fact, um, even with 99% slows, you can't slow someone below 140 speed, so... Wait, really? Yeah. Wow, I never knew that. Otherwise, you'd have, like, two move speed. All right. So, for all intents and purposes, a 99% yeah. slow is a guaranteed flash charm. Ooh. Who needs 99% slows when you got flash <laughs> charm? Stuns. Jinx Rocket going downtown, whiffing, and Tiny Asian Boy is able to teleport. Doesn't take any damage. Snoop Dogg coming in with the Paranoia, able to pick up their third kill of the game. Their first with the ultimate. Looking to potentially set the tone as well. Goth Boy click. Certainly trying to fight back. VBU still holding serve, although down about even in gold, we'll call it. If it is like last game, the big difference maker will be these objective buffs. All series long, Gothboy Click, including this game, have got the first dragon. Not guaranteed on the first for every other objective afterwards, but having the first dragon always a nice thing. This won't be a solo kill. There's no mana, no follow-up. If anything, uh, I think Yoshishi's the one dropping here. Yep. Uh, oh, Marios didn't want any piece of that. Yoshishi flashing away. As you can spot, Overrate and Nehora coming in. Marios a little low. Here comes the teleport. Snoop Dunk will shield the stun. And Night Saw showing up to the top lane party, making sure everybody is A-OK. -okay. And the teams will back off and begin to farm and clear some vision. Hmm. Uh -huh. Rift Herald is on the table, though. Both these teams kind of posturing around it. Gothboy Click being blue side have that easier access with the direct access from their jungle. Gonna get that scuttle. Do have these two control wards in the top side river as well. Will spot out any Herald attempts. Won't spot out any Nocturne Paranoias, though. That's coming up in just a second here. You're like Yoshishi. Yep, Yoshishi. Wisely backing off here. You don't want to be taking too much risks when you're this low health and don't have that flash and you don't know where the Nocturne is. I give a lot of credit to Yoshishi here. Almost up 40 CS this early on in the game at 10 minutes. 96 CS, the CS leader, by a pretty decent margin, at least 10 right now. And 
that's a pretty big surprise. I expected Gangplank to have a little bit more at this point in the game. Yeah, because that's the thing with Gangplank into a lot of melee matchups. Yes, the Scion as a tank has a lot of damage, has a lot of wave clear to contest you, and does have some decent kill threat onto you. You still have such strong zoning abilities with the barrels in lane. Like, you literally just plop one on top of yourself. If they walk up as a melee, they literally cannot contest it because you will be able to auto that barrel before they come, then plop down another barrel. So when they walk up, they eat that barrel. You run away with that boosted move speed. Not quite the case, though. Marios, though, has not died. He's still farming. Has... Ooh. Okay, or CS, so it's not the end of the world. You're still scaling. Oh, Rift Herald getting dropped in the mid lane here. Overrate is going to get two plates worth of gold as Hamlet, Nahor, Knight of the Zed all here. No stun landed. However, they might want to engage on the Sigifies. The dragon has been started up by Snoop Donk here. It is the Hextag Drake. Corky will drop the package to head over and help out with the dragon. Here comes the Scion. Dragon is taken by the side of VBU. Scion coming in, makes an impact on Dude, the Corky. Corky is about to take a whole lot of damage. Sigify doing what he can to keep everybody off. We'll be able to find uh, a death there. Snoop Dogg able to get a kill. Nice use of the paranoia to make sure the vision was cut off. Night saw able Wait. to find a way out. Boom from downtown. Yes. Night of the Zed kill number four for this Jinx. We haven't talked about her a whole lot, but this Jinx four kills 12 minutes into the game. League of Legends hyper carry is about to get online. Yep. <laughs> And poor Night saw there, because they saw the Deathwing smash miss. They're like, all right, yeah, we, we out of oh. this bitch. I'm safe. And then you get hit by the rocket because he decided to farm. Tragic stuff. Yeah, Great team fight. Win overall by Gothboy Click. They're not able to secure the dragon, but they're able to secure the kill advantage. And also net themselves some plates here in the mid lane. Yeah, and that's the difference in this game right now. It's the plates... And it's the top lane differential, which has shrunk quite a bit now. Down to about 30. So we see Mario starting to get the flow of the game. I thought it was an interesting pick, this Gangplank, because we haven't seen Mario's play it all season so far. Busting it out in the playoffs. And just going with the surprise picks has really done pretty well for VBU so far. But this game is still very tight. And after their game one victory, that was a stomp. Do you think they're maybe second guessing themselves in their drafts now? And that, like, you know, we just played back to back games where it's at least been close. You know, what did they have in the first game that, you know, they didn't have in games two or three so far? It did also help in the first game that there were some flaws in the Goth Boy Clicks composition. There, are you calling their composition athlete. dog water? Yeah. <laughs> More or less. Um, a similar situation, <laughs> you could argue for VBU this game. It's a very hard composition to pull off. Yeah, and everybody Ow. praises ease of execution to this level. Because ease of execution is always great to have when it comes to these team comps. Um, even in a 5 versus 5 quarter environment, it's still a lot easier to pull off the Unga Bunga team fight comp than it is to pull off the uh, super pseudo super poke them down and then nocturne ultim comp. Yeah, and oh? you can see that's exactly what Yoshishi is doing. No. Unga Bunga ing on Marios right now and doing so much. And, you know, hasn't. It, it's interesting. Is Go. Did it elect to go for that Sunfire Aegis as opposed to. A Prowler's Claw or something like that hasn't built into the Hole Breaker yet, so... An interesting build. It's not very solo queue-esque, but playing for the team is totally fine. Uh-oh. It's a lot of damage. I think Mario is going to be mana fine. to finish off the kill. Yeah. Yeah. Yoshishi had the Corrupting Pot. The mana sustain would be really helpful. That's oh. a good hook. Yeah, Sigify has had a pretty darn good game so far, but gets ever frosted in turret range. The ignite is down. They could fall. Can use the death charge, and they will be able to survive. Just barely. Oh. Oof. Downtown Joe Brown over there, not quite connecting. Yeah. And this is imagine I know she a Joe Brown. Point. Yeah, I've never. I don't know. I don't know of a Joe Brown either. I said it one time in a normal game. Brown. I said it one time in a normal game, just because it rhymed, and uh, 
Yeah, I just I thought it was funny. From downtown hash brown. Um, that implies you throwing a hash brown, right? And like, I'm not throwing a hash brown anywhere. If a friend wants me to throw a hash brown to them, I'm throwing that in my mouth, dude. Like, I'm not giving you a hash brown. That, that's mine. Who the hell says hash brown? What do you mean? You see, You're saying right. hosh brown, not hash yeah. brown. Hey, you can say it the same way. Listen, it's really weird, okay? I say hosh brown, my sister says hash brown, but my sister, she says bagel instead of bagel. Okay, that's not even like... Because that's just replacing the A with an E. Yeah, she's a bagel. Like, and hosh brown, born, okay. Born in the same household, 10 years apart, but same household, same family... Same area, we didn't move or anything like that. We're South Jersey. And it's just weird. It's just people pronounce things differently here. They don't say water, they say water. Oh, you're in Jersey. Joysy. Nobody says that. Nobody says that. Stop oh, saying that. Man, how's it feel knowing that Jersey Shore, like, ruined any sort of, like, self-respect your state had for, like, an entire hey, generation hey, and listen, a half? Jersey Shore was an entertaining show, and I stand by that. Okay. Um, that's this has been a pretty entertaining game, though. It's, this is yeah, this, this series has been the this series, no, this is not action. They're just poking around, and we'll we'll see what happens when it happens. Started. Oh, never mind. All right, they have started up the dragon here. Tiny Asian boy and the rest of the squad. Knight I'm able to find a way out. in. Oh no, Knight saw. He came. He saw. He died. Hamlet gets to pick up there. Squat. Yeah, yeah. He saw the charm, and that was about it. Yeah. Dragon secured there for Gothboy Click, and now uh, the inside oh. track here, they're disabling the turret, but they don't have the vision. You see, Overeem has no idea where he's supposed to be going. Snoop Dogg that going seriously deep for this one rock. is going to find one. Nahor falls. Now, in the 2v1, unable to make a kill happen. Snoop Dogg falls. It's a kill for Overeem. Now, big knockup. Mario's trying to run away. Tiny Asian boy is he able to find a way to the fight. Overeem oh, is going to get so much healing. And now Sigify is cut off. He is going to get knocked up here oh, no, and will turret. certainly fall. Double kill for Overeem. Here comes the teleport. It's Night Saul. Does That's have the package, package available. And let's see if he's going to try to make a play on it. Looks like they can't. The turret's still standing. They're going to go over and just claim the chickens with it. And Gothboy Click. Gothboy Click showing up to play here in this game. Playing quite well. Tiny Asian Boy caught out and will fall. Yoshishi getting credit for it. Oh, and the play's not over yet. Another flash charm from Hamlet. They've been on point all game long. And it's two kills for nothing. And the bearing being pinged out here by Gothboy Click. Yep, gonna be picking up the Rift Child here with the man advantage on the map. I mean, Hamlet redeeming themselves for that game number one. When these charms hit, they do hit. Able to secure that big kill to start off the fight there on tonight. Oh, Saw able to it's get not a Baron. I thought it was that late in the game. Yeah, it's one of those games. I've had it happen too. Especially I, since... Like, I just thought we were so much later in the game. Yeah, because on the map when you see the icon, it's kind of similar. Yeah. And it has the same, like, respawn timer icon. Yeah. There's, um... I mean, there's, there's three Chronos, dragons yeah. in this game. There's also a Snoop Donk in this game looking to find a kill on the Night of the Living Zed. Uh, but the oh, resurrection oh. is there, and it was mistimed with the ultimate out of Tiny Asian Boy. And now Hamlet chasing down Snoop Donk, finding a kill. Sigify walks right into a charm. It's a double kill for Hamlet. Dashing forward, not able to find a triple. Give that one over to Knight of the Zed. Three for nothing, and the Herald getting dropped here in the mid lane. Knight Saul staring down four goth boys right now. The click is here. Ooh, even the rocket. Here's the big slam from Space Jam. Come on and slam, and welcome to welcome the jam. To Holly Bear. Overrate. Getting a big kill there as Knight Saul now with the death timer and the death timers are just so staggered here that there's just nothing the side of vbu can do they go in and they die and they go in and die and mercifully the onslaught ends as shelly expires it is two turrets taken in the mid lane for gothway click they've cracked open a four thousand gold lead and that last fight kind of illustrates why zillion is both such a great pick into the nocturne and why it's also such a terrible pick into the nocturne because when that zillion 
in Nahor is right by Night of the Zed. Try as you might. You drop the Chrono Shift, and usually by the time that Jinx is revived, the Calvary has arrived, and you ain't got any gas left in the tank to finish that Jinx on off, so, uh... Snoop Dogg gonna have their work cut out for them. Make sure those bot lane buddies further apart next time they pull the trigger on this paranoia. Yeah, and it's it's been a strange game, Snoop Dogg. I mean, the synergy is tested here with the paranoia, and, you know, we can see there were some synergy problems on the other side with the Nocturne pick, and maybe this is a pick that just needs to be shelved for future games because while they've been doing well individually... The rest of the map hasn't been doing very well for the side of VBU at all. I mean, you could argue that Marios is doing the best of the main laners, and it's 1-1-5. One, one, That's not impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, is fairly well farmed up, though, at least. Has the Triforce. Also has the Lord Dominix to help cut through the fat Volibear and Scion, but that's uh -oh. a good stun. Good flash there by Sigify, yeah. but it has been rooted and will fall very shortly. Here comes the teleport. Paranoia out. Snoop Dunk getting on top of the Jinx, but the, the Jinx has the no shift. shift. Overrate is here. Hits one stun. Slows Marios. Marios is the next victim. That's a big barrel crit, but it did not matter. Tiny Asian boy, the last one alive. Flash, stun, everybody flashing. Clean ace. Five for nothing. Sigify up in five seconds, but... I think this game might be over, Gopher, you know? Maybe. Um, 22 minutes is a very early time to end. No but horror? you do have a pretty damn big goal. Oh, they lead. got him. Sigify's just dead. Snoop Dogg up in a second. But I don't know if they can defend this Nexus. There's five Goth Boy Click members. And Jinx is just able to free hit on this Nexus. A surprising, quick stunning victory out of goth boy click and they take the series lead two to one and that's now match point for goth boy click it all started off at that level one getting those two big kills it did stay even but more kills rolling in towards knight of the zed hamlet with those charms coming in pretty damn clutch and then yoshishi able to pull ahead in the one versus one yes did not have solo kills yes was not a huge blowout lead but doing pretty damn well for a melee tank into a gangplank of all things. Gothboy Click, it's not the most impressive win this series with how fast it just snowballed at the end. But it's still the fastest win of the series by a long shot here, Yanni. Yeah, and you know what? It, they set the tone early on. Even though VBU was able to fight back a little bit, setting Snoop Dogg that far behind early on, they were able to find a way back in. But Knight of the Zed was just too strong had two kills early on. I mean, at the 12 minute mark, they had four kills on Jinx and had put been put under zero pressure all game long. And really, when you take a look at the team composition that VBU drafted, it was never really one that was going to be able to put that much pressure on the Jinx. If everything went right, it was going to be a depth charge plus a Nocturne ultimate. But Nehor is just around that's like, yeah, you know, you'll 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 revive, no worries. I'll throw the Chrono Shift on you. And, I mean, that might be the only time that Zillion gets through. It was an annoying pick that VBU had no answer for. And it kind of didn't help that they didn't pick the best dive. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think Definitely got to go back pick. to the drawing board a little bit here. I think Gangplank was a little out of place. Mm-hmm. Because this is a match point now. Your backs are now the ones up against the wall. You had the early lead in the Series 1. Oh, it was... A fairly close game too until the very end this time around it was pretty close for the most part in the ballpark at the very least until like the final two-ish minutes of the game but those final two minutes really just snowballed out of control and led to the base just being destroyed yeah i certainly wasn't expecting to see that that is i i mean i after they made that play in the mid lane it just felt like the dominoes kept falling and you saw it earlier in the game. There was a microcosm when the Shelly was put down and it knocked out so many of those turrets. They would just die and then somebody else would get caught and they would die and then somebody else would get caught. And the death timers were staggered and, you know, they got staggered early on there. And then all of a sudden everybody died around the same time. And there's nothing more that the side of EBU could do. And they need to take a long look in the mirror coming into this 
game four, which could be the final game of their season, a team with so much promise could potentially disappoint. But that's something we'll have to see once we do get into game four. We'll see everyone on the flip side of this break, though.
ladies and gentlemen, I want to Sue. thank Sue. I want to thank. <laughs> I want to thank Goth Boy Click for making a pretty quick game there, as we are quickly here in the draft for game four. Because let me tell you, it is 10:51 p.m. on the East Coast, and we might see we might see another game after this one. As we said in the post game, maybe the Zillion gets banned. It gets picked up by Goth Boy Click. Pantheon, Shivana, Udyr, gone. Gothboy Click doesn't want to deal with them. VBU, Volibear, they determined it was way more important to that game. Morgana, Lissandra, gone. Volibear has been pretty big all series long. Mm -hmm. VBU, what are you going to pick? Oh. Twitch? Okay. Oh. So, so Tiny Asian Boy Twitch. Twitch with? Tiny it's Asian just... Boy has played Twitch once this series. Once this, um, yeah. this season. 11 0 and 8 is your what is this one to five is like such turbo garbage, but then you hit six, <laughs> leave just... lane, and then pop up somewhere and kill someone. I oh. want to see what this is paired with. The Mundo also locked in this early, interestingly enough. That's gonna be a fat shield in the top lane, though. Gonna pre be appreciated for this Twitch goth boy click on the Diego. The percentage HP damage, nice to get through the Mundo. It is Absolutely. a change of pace, though. Yeah. And, you know, I like that we're seeing so many different champions here, although some things never change. It's a zillion and potentially a Ziggs. Twitch Mundo, you don't typically see those two champions in team compositions, but here we are. And VBU, you have to remember, their backs are against the wall. They feel that this comp that they're drafting will take them to that all-important game five. So, okay... Let's see the Varus. Pick something. There we go. Okay. Because the Azillion would have been very annoying utility come on the bot lane. I'm hoping this is a much more either crit or attack speed orientated Varus here. Because you want to hyper carry when you pick the Zillion usually. Chrono Shift is literally you just get to have two life bars on your hyper carry in a fight. What? And if that's the lethality Varus, especially since we now see the Orn. I mean. It could no, be no. Horde mid lane. We literally saw it earlier no, this year. No, no, you are right. We did, we did see that. But maybe, I mean, maybe it's a Mundo jungle. I mean, would you be putting Night Saw on an Orn? Like, is that really what you want to be doing? Because it would have to be Night Saw on an Orn, unless it's a Mundo jungle. And also, importantly, we don't see the support locked in for this Twitch, which I think is a huge deal. Because mm -hmm. you want to support that enables the Twitch to just fly on in twitch you mean is a combo you do really sack the lane early when it comes to that sort of thing but the fact that the yumi gets free stealth on the twitch you pop the final chapter when the twitch pops the spray and pray it's all over yeah um could see it paired with a more standard engage support too um thankfully the support pool won't be pinched though just targeting those solo layers is goth boy click bbu i mean they should pick up the support now. here hmm. just uh enable your twitch keep your side lanes and jungle in a bit of mystery here karma's like okay is that gonna be top mid or support so here's the even, even lower this point. yeah don't even know at this point i do know that vbu banned the darius because it's a pretty clear tell that either Mundo, uh, Mundo is probably in the jungle and Orn's probably going top. They don't want to have to deal with that. Gothboy Click, they've seen this before. The Orn, along with another tank, and they were like, you know what? We're gonna get rid of the vein. We don't want to deal with that in the top lane. Set the hover here, and it looks like Set is going to be the lock in, and that is something fearsome when you could take a giant goat man or, or you know, Doctor Mundo and just slam him on top of a Twitch or a Karma. Boy click does want some magic res magic damage though because it is or dr mundo two champions more than happy to just itemize a okay vlad no, would have been, spicy. Um... this is less spicy but it's still spicy there's a lot of options though do see what goth boy click is going to get into i think they want the anivia they are going to lock it in that anivia wall can really bust up a lot of engage opportunities <laughs> i believe you can interrupt the Orn ulti if you time it really mm -hmm. well. The most important thing is, though, you put up the wall and the Twitch has to walk around it to flank you. 
and the Mundo can't walk directly into you. The Vigar does match decently well into the Anivia, given that you slightly outrange most of the Anivia spells outside of the Q Frostbite. But the Anivia is gonna have a deceptive amount of kills right here. Like, this is something that catches everyone off guard when they face Anivia. How much kill threat an Anivia with Electrocute and just basic abilities that level 3 has on most control mages in this game? Oh, for sure, because a lot of them are squishy and Anivia's base damages are pretty strong. Vagar, solid pick. We've been seeing this champion a whole lot at various levels of play. It's weird into Anivia because... You know, you're going to try to burst her out, and then if you do manage to kill her, she's going to just go into egg form. And with the Zillion as well, it means that Vagar is going to have a tough time trying to actually burst the members out and kill them. That said, the cage is pretty excellent setup for the Twitch to be able to just spray and pray with reckless abandon. Mm-hmm. Because if you trap people in the cage, you're going to trap to eat that spray and pray. Gothboy Click does have ways around it, though, with the unstoppable, um, the, the, the showstopper. showstopper. Yes. I was wanting to say Kingmaker. I'm like, that is definitely not the ability name. Um, it's going to be a very fight-heavy game, though. That's for damn sure. Do love the Anivia into the double tank, because if you do get the Leandries, you will be shredding through Mundo and Orn. Yeah, it's a lot of damage that Anivia can provide and a lot of effective CC in terms of putting the wall in places and forcing everybody to walk around and stuff like that as we talked about slightly earlier. There is one worry I have for Gothboy Click is their engagement seems not super secure and guaranteed. It's a Viego stun. It's Varus Ultimate, which we saw... Earlier in the series, uh, the ultimates didn't really do that much, but there was a Samir on the other side. Yeah. I mean, Set's going to really have to pull some people in or, you know, you know just start shop stopping some shows. And that's an Ivia stun and a, a well-placed wall. But all of those are pretty circumstantial. There's nothing like the Nautilus that was in the last game that's like, point and click, we're going. You could also argue that VBU suffers that to a similar degree. Because mm -hmm. their engage is the Ornhorn. The Twitch engage isn't really engage. It's more, hey, you've blown some cooldowns. Don't expect me to be here. So I'm just going to kill you before you can press buttons. Mm -hmm. So both these teams. And it's bigger cage. Yeah. You know, and, and that's it. And sure, Karma can speed the team up. But this is a very walk at you team out of the side of VBU. But Twitch is fast. Vagar with Predator is fast. Like we said, Karma can speed up the team and give Mundo that extra bit of movement speed they need. And then Orn doesn't necessarily need to move up very quickly and just call the Forge God from the back line. So there is potential for both of these squads. Go Farino going into this last game with Gothboy click up two games to one. Looking at the team compositions, I'm putting you on the spot. Who do you think has the better composition? And just strictly off the comps, who do you think would win this game? Kind of feeling VBU's composition more because they do have that much more direct engage, and the real severe lack of engage from Gothboy Click can be an extreme worry. That's my big call, but I'm not entirely sure on it, as you can tell from my voice, because both these teams kind of relatively even. I feel when it comes to comp power. Absolutely. When it comes to comp power and when it comes to player power, because the series has been pretty tight. They had that crazy second game. And we will see what transpires here in the fourth game of the series, potentially the final game of this series. For VBU, it's go home or live to fight another game. For Gothboy Click, they look to punch their ticket to the semifinals. We will see you. In about four to five minutes as we get through the spectator delay to bring you all the action for game four, potentially the last game of this series.
Ladies and gentlemen, this could potentially be our last game of the night. It is Goth Boy Click and VBU. Let me tell you, last game, Goth Boy Click made a statement. And VBU trying something a little bit different here. They have a Dr. Mundo in the jungle. But for, you know, I can't remember the last time I saw something like that. Yeah, it was more popular right after Mundo's rework. But Riot did also specifically nerf it a handful of times. For those wondering, MSU Blueha Lotus is 2-1 in the favor of Lotus right now. So they'll be starting up game four in just a bit. And this does have huge playoff implications, right? So if Lotus wins, that does mean the winner of this game will play against uh, Wheel of Solbert, who managed to snag the one seed. It does mean that if Lotus wins, they will have a date with CB Diamond in the semifinals next week. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I had to quickly smooch my pooch because mm. she's being a cute dog. Mm. Yeah. You're a cute All right. Dog. So, junglers, starting on the <laughs> bot side for Goth Boy Click. For Stoop Dog, he'll be starting on the top side. He's got Ghost. He has Smite. And, you know. I... He's going to run at people. It's just what Mundo does. You know, we didn't even factor in that he could have had Ghost and, you know, start moving even faster. Summoner choices. We've got Tiny Asian Boy does pick up the cleanse. Ooh, Marios. Pretty nice. And Marios is taking a lot of damage, but dishing out a fair amount himself. Tiny Asian Boy signify trading in the bot lane, but not too much damage so far as Twitch. Not known for having that much damage at level one. Even unless you're able to fully stack up your passive, oh. something went horribly wrong. If that happens, is Yoshi yeah. punching the goat upstairs? Especially since it's lethal tempo. Hail of Blades Twitch has a much easier time in laning phase stacking up the passive. That's why you do sometimes see the Hail of Blades. It also transitions well if you're looking to go for more bursty mid game because you pop out a stealth. Pop your ulti, you get the super fast triple auto, which can help you finish off kills. Lethal Tempo, much, much more team fight focused, much more scaling focused. So it he is. Be hitting from downtown. Like, I just thought of that. Yeah. you. It's hard to stack up before you pop the ulti, because usually you're popping your ulti right after you come out of stealth. Mm hmm. But if you are able to get both the Spray and Prey and Lethal Tempo proc, that is a total of plus 175 range. I believe it's 100 from the ulti. Well, regardless of Oh, no, the, the ulti is 300. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude's good. Dude's gonna. You know, you ever see those videos that, like, um, that, like, Vandral posts on, like, YouTube that it's, like, Senna kills somebody from the base, you know, and they're in the bot lane oh. or something like that on the, uh, on like the the PTR or whatever, what is it called again? The the test realm. Oh PBE. Oh uh, PBE. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, that's exactly what it's gonna be like for Tiny Asian Boy if he gets the uh, the trigger off of Lethal Tempo with his ultimate. It's gonna be bonkers. So, on the subject of Senna base killing, there was a really, really brilliant choice by Riot Games when they released Senna. To have her get double stacks on ARAM. Yeah. This was back when she also had higher soul production rate. Oh, mm -hmm. hold that thought for a little bit. Might no, 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 go on, but, go um, on. We're fine. She had like a nearly 70% ARAM win rate, and Riot knew, and they refused to hotfix what was such an easy fix and just let it sit there because this isn't Summoner's Rift, so God forbid we get any hot fixes. But um, I got her in one game. I got enough stacks that I had about 975 auto range just on normal auto attacks. What? Mm-hmm. So, you That's know. Absurd. I mean, now I know why I feel so powerful when I play Senna and Aira. I'm like, yeah. it makes so she much She doesn't get double stacks anymore. anymore, thank God. Ah, uh, I mean. At least Senna no, was... Uh, I mean, no more 975 range. Like, what? That seems like a net negative. Yeah. This might be the slowest pace game of the series. I have to be honest with you. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just think it's crazy. and It just seems like these teams are unwilling 
to potentially make a mistake is, as I say, that tiny Asian boy takes a big trade, but traded right back on the Knight of the Z. A well-timed exhaust to make sure Knight of the Z still stays alive. Ignite ticking away, but the Varus will survive. If you pop the mist here, you might be able to catch up. He's going to pop the and mist. Tricky, though. Level six. I'm going to do a lot of damage here. Oh, does not stun in the ulti, though. That's kind of big. Oh. Doesn't have a lot of, enough mana left either. Over eight here in the bot lane, he's been well spotted out. Is looking to help the gang push down here and get a back off here for the Varus and the Zillion. Face breaker. No shishi. Really he's, making, uh... Yeah, he's making Mario's work here to try to get some CS. Because usually this matchup is much more even. Mm -hmm. Like... The Orn has kill threat early, has to watch out for the face breaker. And the set typically will outscale in the one versus one. Not so much in the team fight. Orn has been started, could see a smite fight. It is a oh, hex tech dragon, here. so the damage will add up. Look for the wall. Oh, who's got it? Overrate is going to get it. And I mean, Night Saul was not able to make a move. I, I think the thought was that. The Zillion had backed as well, but it was just the Varus. So nothing to be had there. Thanks for the leash, kid. Says Overeight. First Dragon, going to Goth Boy Click. Again, for the fourth time yeah. in the series, too. Their Dragon Control has been really, really solid this series. And, you know, come to think of it, really, these teams are not that different when it comes to total dragons. It was a four dragon difference between VBU and Goth Boy Click for the regular season. PBU at 44, Gothboy Click at 40, you know, the top, the upper echelon of the league in dragon taking, and Gothboy Click is put on a first dragon clinic this series. Yeah. There we go. Let's not drop something. <laughs> yeah. Could be the final one of the series. Of course, it is just a single early dragon. It's usually just to pick me up to give you a little boosted scaling as the game does go on. Flash forced out from Night Saw. That mm -hmm. is important. Cause... Absolutely. It's a good roam, too. By oh, now, that's by a debate in the bot lane, we baby. Go. They got him. First blood going over to Night of the Zed. When back picked up the Serrated Dirk and does a heck of a lot more damage than they used to. Now that is like... 4,000 IQ, seven-dimensional chest there. Because Nahor showed up in the mid lane with that realm. So they're like, okay, nobody's down yeah. here. Yeah, there's, there's no Spike. way Overrate's just here. Yeah, Overrate's just big chilling in the bush. Bing Chi Ling, as they say in Zhongguo when it comes to ice cream. Hamlet could take some damage here. It doesn't have the mana to be able to... Find a kill on the night saw does survive does not pop the egg that is fairly critical snoop donk on the invade here manages to get a piece of that blue buff is realize that overrate is on the okay, bottom north horn and is trying to counter jungle here Ornhorn, as you said goes out i think that might have just been to clear the wave not entirely positive i think so it looks like marios wants to take it back here second plating is gonna go toward night of the zed and nahor here oh Whoa, it's not over yet Flash bomb does not land. The stun lands on There's the six. No Earth, you heard the flash. Oh man, that's a lot of damage. Are they able to finish oh. it off? No, tiny Asian boy will get one back. Over eight night of the Zed and they go too deep. Over, Here we go. There's you no see chrono shift. How far away he's hitting the flash. He gets the kill through exhaust. Oh. It's a double kill for tiny Asian boy. And now, long have we awaited. The twitch has been activated. And things went south real quick there when they're not able to finish off Sigify and pick up that kill. Yoshishi can look for the kill here. There's no man on Marios. Uh-oh, but here is a Snoop Donk. He means business oh, no. because that is business man Mundo. Yoshishi will be able to get the kill, but Snoop Donk will trade it back. And it's crazy to think, but once again, for the fourth game this series, Let's the look. lead by Gothboy and they are not able to hang on to it and now we're back at an even state yep um time will tell though it is dead even next dragon though might change things up 
You're able to pick it up for free either one of these sides. It either evens the field or it gives you a nice little leg up. Uh-oh. Eggs uh, should be available. Yep, the egg is available. Let's see if they're able to finish it off. I don't think they have the damage. It's going to be close. They do. Knights all able to pick up the kill with the Baleful Strike. Plus seven for the Vagar. Plus seven, baby. Although, it might be plus four now, I think. I remember mm -hmm. they buffed the value. Overrate is over the wall. Yoshishi can face breaker this before that unstoppable, by the way. Um, here we go. Stun down. Mario's trying to cut it out, but there's nobody to run to. Here. He doesn't, I mean, that horn might come up, but he's got nothing he can do. In the mid lane, Snoop Dogg drops that Rift Herald as they're looking to put more gold in the pocket of Night Saw. Nahor is here and will be able to kill the Rift Herald. Nothing more can be done. Overrate is here looking to find a stun, but the CC immunity that Mundo has will ensure that he's able to walk out A-OK. -okay. And a slight gold lead for VBU, although negligible. Over this dragon up in 10 seconds, and once again, Gothboy Click is there first. They don't have teleport from their top laner, which might be an issue, but with this one from Mario's walking on back to the top lane, it would be a four versus four. They already have control over this river. Tiny Asian Boy has cleanse, has the spray and pray, and the stealth available, does not choose to do so. Early dragon lead once again here for Gothboy Click. They're going to appreciate having that little extra boost of stats and the clock rift. Going to be pretty damn handy for all these rims that we have been seeing come on out. Being able to rotate faster as this Twitch, as this Zillion, as any of these junglers really. Very potent to say the least. Absolutely. That movement speed is not to be understated and... Man, does VBU really want that dragon because everything that they can do predicated no, on the ultimate. The There's the root. There's the double uh, stun. Uh, uh. Yeah, no shot here. Sigify will fall. Give an assist over the Anivia, but Knight of the Zed picks up kill number two. And this cracked open about a 20 CS lead here in the bot lane. Over eight, engaging land. on the Night Saw is going to go right through that cage. He's coming out of his cage, and he is doing just He'll fine, just baby. Fine. Da, 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 da. Solo kill for over eight. God. I've been to waiting know, uh... to do that one. Waiting to say that one since champ select, my man. Yeah. I, I used to know Mr. Brightside's lyrics much, much more by heart because it was a tradition in mm -hmm. a summer camp I went to. Haven't been to the summer camp in like a decade and a half at this point, so it would surprise me if you have. You don't yeah. just listen to it. It's not on your playlist. I have it. It's... Actually, I haven't downloaded it to my offline PC playlist. It doing? is saved to my um, digital library playlist, though, on Amazon Music. I used to have Spotify, but then my parents were like, eh, we're, we're going to switch the family plan to Amazon Music. And me just being a ch cheap person that wants to mooch off the free plan i'm like this is like terrible in every other aspect but i don't want to pay for Spotify. but it's still free baby yeah I, although amazon music is actually just so garbage it barely functions it lags i can't you, even do things are properly. you really gonna say this on the platform that jeff bezos owns you're crazy damn shoddy okay he's just gonna absolutely mute you just you he's gonna find his way into this discord and mute you I feel like you're just, like, subliminally asking Pop-Tart to mute me. No, 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 no. Because oh, Pop-Tart been, is an admin and doesn't funny. have the power to do so, I believe. That would have been quite funny. Also in the books, though, is a bit of a dive. Yep, and I don't know if they're going to try to get this turret first, but it's a nice double knock-up, and now the turret is going to start on Yoshishi. Yoshishi Stopper. getting his shield. There's a nice knock-up there, but he will show stop his way out. Does he survive? He does, and they will get credit for that top turret. An excellently played dive by Yoshishi and Overeem. A little close for comfort. Um, I expected the Showstopper to come out while the Call of the Forge God was being channeled. That Ooh. way you couldn't get bopped up. Still works out in the end. You do still pick up that first turret, which is very handy to have, to say the least. Oh my god. Oh. This hurts. The control, the control ward is going to spot this. Is and it going to be enough to stop them. this? They yeah, do they have Hamlet have, now. They have teleport to teleport in the bot lane. Uh -oh, teleport yeah. flank. Oh my god! Everything's going on. Yoshishi from the side. Tiny Asian boy in stealth, trying 
to get toward this set. Set flash hey, toward. He's trying to find Night Saw. The ultimate goes down, and Yoshishi gets kited out. Now Sigify potentially in trouble. Knight of the Zed with an excellent flash there. We'll be able to find kill There's on the ball. Marios. That's number three. Emily getting lower and lower. Big stun by the Vagar and Snoop Donk once more. He hits the plant. He's going deep. Oh, he is perfectly no in the eggs, Benedict. But tiny Asian boy able to just barely walk out. Over eight finds the kill on to the karma and it could knight of the zed be looking for downtown unable to overrate chasing down snoop Dogg. he got slowed last auto attack will do it there is another kill for this viego four one and two three one and two on the varus and the carries once again gonna carry and that's three and a half thousand gold lead decently chunky and sizable when we're talking about only 16 minutes into the game here, Yanni. Combine that with the fact that you have these two dragons in your back pocket as well. That is some very delectable scaling on your side. Well, okay, you don't have the best scaling, but you have the dragons as that scaling threat, I should mention. I'm going to be honest quick. with you. I mean, it I'm seems like be... a... Hmm? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because okay. I'm going to go on a long one very yeah. soon. I mean, I've been going on for a long time, too. All right. I'm yeah. going to admit, VBU a little rambling. was my favorite team coming into the league. Like, I just liked what they did, and I thought they were a pretty good team and were pretty underrated. But Goth Boy Click has made me a believer tonight. I am a believer. I selected them to be the worst team in the league in the power hey. rankings. And the legend of Goth Boy Click may live on another week. They have played so well tonight. They haven't played that well against the top four teams, but this is a prove it series for no, this group. Testing that bird's Let's pretty see. fast. She's zooming. Let's KFC see. delivers. <laughs> I guess KFP. It's like a VTuber meme for uh, Kiara of Hollow Live English. Oh, she's a I, Phoenix. Okay, okay. And calls herself KFP for. Kentucky Fried Kiara Phoenix. Fried Phoenix. Oh, but Kiara Fried Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, no, that Kentucky makes sense. Fried Phoenix is probably more applicable here for Hamlet. Well, that Phoenix is certainly not fried. She is icy chill. As the siege continues, here comes the Rift Herald. They are going to use it to break down that mid turret. And Goth Boy Click continuing to impress on the objective game. They have just been better than VBU tonight. Let's see if it continues. Still a lot of game left, but time running out for VBU. And the gold lead is growing. Chains of Corruption do land, but it is max rank. Oh, man, that's so much shown. damage. Snoop Donk is in the middle of five members. Snoop Donk unable to walk out of there. Overrated oh. is spell immune because he took the Mundo and he just walks right out of the cage. I thought you didn't get champion passes when you possess them. Um, I mean, you get, you get like, uh, Targon stacks. I know that's not what it's called anymore, but I know you get yeah. those. That's I, technically a... You get a lot of weird it? stuff when you possess as Viego. It's a, I think a better question is what don't you get when you possess somebody as Viego? Ultimate. Is that well, sure, go? okay. I, I kind of meant like, you know, the little finer details, but I, I suppose... I, I know suppose there's some like really weird things. I don't know. There's a whole book on them. There is? That's, that's getting sidetracked a little. Wait, Gold wait, wait there's a book? Yeah. Gold you, lead has been it? growing. No, 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 no. I'm not done. Do you have the book or do you like have it somewhere? Do you know where it's located? No. How do I find this? I don't know. All right. Sources, I made it up. What? Get an eight, eight. Bro. Bro. Oh my God. That's a bro moment if I've ever seen one. I That's am the biggest loser. It actually made. I am the biggest loser tonight, apparently. <laughs> Gold lead. <laughs> <laughs> hovering about 4,000 here. This goth boy click. Two minutes and 30 seconds away from their potential soul, which can do so much for yeah, them. All... Hamlet is so fast, man. I mean, you get hit with that zillion move speed boost, and you do be popping. It is the lock of the iron Zillari zillion, though. I, I really wanted to see the um, Trevelio zillion. Because mm -hmm. then you just double down on the move speed you give, but lock it, giving you that survivability. Pretty handy against a Twitch Vygar. It'll well, block a lot of the burst you, from both of them. You don't need it if you have access to the uh, to the Windrake. 
So, you That's know, it's true. like, all right, you know. He just knew. He just knew going into this game that, you know what? We're going to get a Cloud Drake. And we're going to get the movement speed. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, sometimes you just know. And this Baron has been started up for Gothwick. Like, this is fairly risky. And the pings come out immediately from Sigify. You're going to tell Warren trying to get come in on, here. Bail, 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 bail. They will back off here. They trap one in the pit. Wait. And Set is now teleporting into the pit. Baron has reset, though. No aggro to be pulled. Nahor, a little low, but the rest of Gothboy click, and no I worse for wear. Please don't start this. They're, they want to start it. They really want this fight so badly. It just doesn't seem yeah. just too smart for them. And cooler heads prevail. You literally have the entire competitive history of Dignitas. <laughs> no. Please don't <laughs> I was thinking of that, man. You're so right. Yeah. I mean, whenever you mention Baron, okay. Yeah, whenever oh. you mention Baron throws in competitive league, that's a good, okay. That's a terrible transition, but there's a fight breaking out. Potentially not Hamlet breaking out. To get close. Here comes the Ornhorn. People are split. Hamlet does have the flash of the wall. Snoop Dogg still oh, very so much And the CC shield still unbroken as there's not too much the side of Gothway Click can do right now to put damage on to this Mundo. That was so much happening, yet so little happening at the same point. Because we're seeing oh, ultimate yeah. summoners just blown everywhere. And those are huge cooldowns here right before this dragon in 30 seconds. Look at also the people that had to reset here. Some teleports having to be channeled on out as well. VBU do have the largest manpower in the river for now. That can let them set up some wards. There is no scuttle to take. There's some mid lane prio to garner. Uh-oh. Here we go. The engagement. Marios is in a bad way here in the middle of four uh... members of the side of Goth Boy Click. And the Goths come over with the big burly boots and stomp on the face of the goat. It is a free pick for Goth Boy Click, and they will look to take the Cloud Soul. Man, and um, that's got to be just so much dummy moose. Those, Dar those Doc Martens, by the way. They stomped on my man with the Doc Martens. They just, they just kind of mobbed them, you know, and just started kicking the crap out of them. They're gonna transition to Baron here. What? Mario's does not have teleport when they come back. I think uh -oh. the call is yes, this. You have all this move speed, you can look to engage, but this is a little too forceful, buddy. Overrate will fall. Nahor was not able to get the ultimate onto him, and now Tiny Asian Boy is firing away with the Twitch. He takes a lot of damage. He does have to Gale Force his way out of there. That was so crazy. Overrate used his ultimate, but buffered it in a way that he had walked into the cage. So when he when he ulted through the cage, he was stunned when he landed. I've never seen that before. I wish we could read it. was a crazy sequence of events. Never. That is yeah. for damn sure. But also, um, Gothboy Click maybe got a little too ahead of themselves. That was a pretty nice team fight win they picked up there. But it was only that one for O. They got the Cloud Soul. That's more than enough, really. And I get they're mostly trying to bait the Baron to try and get a pick afterwards, but. I would just edge on the side of, hey, back, spend your gold, then look to force the Baron. So many plays that are still to be made in this game as VBU is hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. Goldie shrinking a little bit to about 3,000 as Tiny Asian Boy continuing to scale, still just on one item at this point in time. It is a Gale Force, which is super necessary against the team composition he's going up against, but... Man, imagine if he had something else, you know, like a, like a Kraken Slayer would be really cool. It's over it once again, starting the Baron as they're trying to zone off the Mundo. Last plan taken, and all right, they're finally going to pull off once again. This is a big yeah, stun. You know, Shishi uh, taking a lot of damage. Hamlet trying to force everybody off, but once again, Gothboy Click is just trying to force the square peg into the round hole. It is not working. Yeah. We kind of highlighted this issue in Champion Select where they don't really have the best direct engage. It does really help that they have the Cloud Soul for all that extra move speed right now. But it still doesn't change the fact, like, they don't... Okay, big chains of corruption. Massive, Sigify is low. 
Sigify with the shield able to survive. Nahor taking a lot of damage. Here comes over eight. They're trying to get onto Mario. So here's a teleport coming into the set. Horn Horn coming down and will not land on Yoshishi. Who oh, flashes flash. forward, picks up the Yorn, but is so deep right now in the middle of five members of the enemy team. Night Sauce to flash away. Snoop Dunk trying to find a way to get away, but was stunned, and the wall is there. However, oh, that's a beautiful it is a huge page. dark matter. Big Zonius by over eight as he's now become the oh. Mundo oh. and Fagor is going to get picked off a two for one in favor of Goth Boy Click and you bet your ass they're going for the Baron this time. The fade away briefcase to secure the two for one. It looks so good for VBU when they got the cage into the spray and pray. It's not over yet. Mario's teleporting on in trapped in the pit. Having to hit that wall. Having to eat up a lot of damage with the Baron with the Leandres. Oh, Tether landed, and I think Marios is going to be okay. And once again, this time it was VBU. The onus was on them to stop the Goth Boy Click Baron attempt, and it was a it was a solid Baron attempt, but unable to convert on it. And this game is still close. It's really just the Dragon Soul separating these two teams right now. But the thing with Cloud, the reason why people think it's the weakest or consider it as the weakest or worst feeling is that it doesn't give you the best in combat stats just some in combat utility with the slow resistance and move speed but it's not like the others where it just lets you tank out a ton of damage or dish out a ton of damage it's more the earnest is much more on you for using it to set up fights for sure and a lot of these champions do benefit from it though so yeah this is a pretty solid drake for them but yeah it does it does go to show that, you know, even if your team composition can take advantage of it, sometimes you would rather have the raw damage. Could you imagine what point of this game we'd be at if it was a uh, an Infernal Soul or even a, uh, a Mountain Soul? But we got the Cloud Soul, and we have the Elder Drake spawning in a little over a minute, Goferino. And let me tell you, that will certainly put a timer on this game as it did the last one. Hamlet, though, similar to game three, but instead of charms, it is those frost blasts. Again, some nice stuns over the walls, too. Chunk, uh -oh. Ornhorn, gonna beat that. Okay, it does land, so it's not the field goal, but not exactly touchdown either. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose it allows the side of EBU to get control of this river, so pretty heads up play there, but they will be lacking that for the next fight. Yoshishi without a teleport. Unable to continue to push on the top side is now walking down toward the rest of the team as Goth Boy Click looks to get priority in the mid lane. And accordingly, hold that thought. Oh, big wall. Big wall. Marios is trapped. Yoshishi, however, has a big shield, is going to throw Snoop Donk in the middle of his team. There is look the ultimate Hamlet from the Paris. Look at those roots coming out. Oh, Hamlet, Knight of the Dead, dead combining for a kill on the Twitch. They found the Karma as well. Marios is going to be the next to fall. And then that could be the fight. It's a four. Ooh. Make it a five for nothing. A clean ace for Goth Boy Click. And the map is their oyster. And VBU, they start that fight off like, yes, this set step too far forward. Let's jump his damn ass. But the problem is... Between the Haymaker shield, between the Gore Drinker heal, and of course the Chrono Shift, it takes so goddamn long. And then we see Hamlet able to flank around as the Anivia drop down the Ice Zone, drop down the wall, sequester off some important members. That's going to be Inhibitor. That's going to be Elder Dragon as well. Should not be Baron. Team is a little too split. The Death Timer is coming back up here for VBU. But it should be Baron in just a bit here with this huge, just gold and map state garnered by Goth Boy Click, Iriani. And it's crazy. Just League of Legends is such a fragile game, man. One fight breaks open the entire game. An inner turret, an inhibitor turret, an inhibitor, the Elder Drake, Baron positioning, and the damage to be able to do it. You know, Cloud Soul might not give you damage, but... You know, that uh, that Elder Drake certainly puts a little bit of pep in your step and a little bit of spice on your attacks. Well, let's Snoop see, because this Baron has been started up. It is five versus five on the map. Take it with a briefcase, buddy. Last time's available. Does not go it for it. Kill. Don't getting lower. 
Ultimate misses from Varus. Snoop Dogg just able to stay alive. He almost got hit by the Elder Execute. It looks like Gothboy Clip will make themselves up to the top side of the map as they look to continue to push in and look to end this series. They have the tools. They have the buffs here once again. They have the gold lead. Can they close it on out? Not as much wave clear this time around to deal with, unlike last game. Oh, wait, this uh -oh. should be a kill. He, he's dead. He's dead. He's going to get eldered in a second after this Q yep. from downtown. It's Knight of the Zed. Snoop Dunk regening up, but still marked for death by that elder. He's he walking dunk, up without dunk. the rest of the team. He gets blown <laughs> up, and that set is going to blow people up too. No, it's a shield from Sigify. Tiny Asian boy blasted away. Sigify blasted away. Summoners have disconnected. Vagar is dead. It's a triple kill for Overy. And Goth Boy Click, the team that I doubted the entire season, beats up on VBU 3-1 to one and punches their ticket to the semifinals. Woo! And, um... What a dominant game three and four from Goth Boy Click. BBU, they had that super dominant game one. They had that pretty goddamn close game number two, but Goth Boy Click, they're able to rally around here, it seems, Yanni, and just bring it on back. Every single one of their lanes just having a swell time, it seems. It was absolutely massive. I thought to myself while we were in loading screen that maybe we were going to see a pop-off game out of Overy on the jungle who had a couple of pretty good games today. But, you know, I saw that 17-1 in six graves at one point and was like, I want to see more of that. Comes through with the Viego, notching 10 kills. Knight of the Zed a strong game as well. Hamlet did exactly what they had to do. And it was a well-earned, hard-fought victory for Goth Boy Click. Punching their tickets to the semifinals. Still waiting on the results of Lotus versus MSU to really know what it is going to shape up to be. Game number four for that series only just starting, so we'll be able to catch a lot of that here after we finish up the formalities. But Goth Boy Click, pretty standout series, and um, bringing it back after that game number one, to say the least. It is a really good performance. They got smacked in the mouth in game one and take three straight games after a drag out, knockout, slobber knocker game two. And talked about it briefly after that game two the emotional exhaustion when a game goes that deep and you lose. And it just looked like VBU lost their edge after game two. Really crazy, too, because some of their big picks did get through. They're able to get their Udir. They're able to get their Orn in that top lane. This did not work out, sadly, for them. And that is going to be the end of VBU's season here in Blue Otter Diamond. It was a solid season, 5-2. and two. And, you know, you can't really be too upset at that. They beat the number one seeded Wheel of Silver in Week 1. They were unable to get wins over Lotus and Diamond, but not many teams were able to do so. They cleaned up Gothboy Click 2-0 in week six, and Gothboy Click gets their revenge. Credit to them, that team that had a really rough start to the season, aside from their first week win, and they had to go through a gauntlet of teams. And they have made their way here and made their way to the semifinals, and it's still up in the air who they may play. You are correct about that. So let's go find out who they will play. We're going to cut it here for the night. We will send you over to Blue Otter League 2. Currently two kills to one. Just over nine minutes into the Rengar game. Top. Game still tight. What? Rengar top? Yeah, we're going to take you there real quick. For Yanni, go for Eno, Pop-Tart, who is our producer tonight. And the rest of the Blue Otter League family, some of them who are still streaming right now, we will see you on Blue Otter League 2.